Um, Duke would like to play an up-tempo style of basketball. They do not want to have Maryland dictate the style of play here tonight. Turn around by Bias, and that's something, Lynn, they had a hard time doing a few nights ago against NC State. Get the ball inside of the big guy. And if they can't get the ball to Lenny Bias, they've got no one to score. He carries the load. That's the one thing that has probably caused the problem for Maryland more than anything else. Their inability to get some offensive help for Bias. They battle for the ball at the end line, and Duke will keep it. And as we mentioned at the top, one of the key matchups will be whoever Jeff Baxter guards. It seems that he started out on Johnny Dawkins, and right away Duke went to post Dawkins up, try to get him a high percentage shot. Henderson's open off the inbounds pass, and he ties it up at 2-2. And that's the other thing we spoke about. David Henderson, if he gets off early, the Terps are in for a long night. Lefty promised some lineup changes after the loss to NC State, and he fulfilled that promise. He's got, of course, John Johnson starting in the backcourt, and they blow a whistle and call an offensive foul against Maryland. Duke gets it back, and Tony Massenburg, the young man starting in the middle. I think that was a bit of a push-off. One of the Maryland players, I believe, got a bit frustrated and not being able to get open and kind of used his hands rather than his body to get open. No foul call. They just turn it over on the palming violation and now Duke comes back with a game tied at two and 18.46 to go in the first half. We are just underway at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Dawkins goes baseline, checked there by Baxter. Henderson bounce feeding inside Allery. Thanks. Shot up the There's a lot of hand play inside. This game is starting out to be a physical type of ball game. Duke four, Maryland two. The Turks come back with a basketball. They find Bias open inside. He is really hammered by Allery, and Bias squares off. And as I just mentioned, it is going to be a physical game. You've got tempers flaring. Here's the replay. Great pass by Derek Lewis inside. He draws the defensive player to him and dishes off to Bias. That time, I'm sure, it had to be called an intentional foul. And uh, Lenny Bias did not like the way he was fouled. But it's going to be that way all night, Leonard. You know, it's interesting, Len. Mike Krzyzewski concerned after his loss last Saturday against North Carolina that his club simply was not physical enough. Well, we it have... looked like a little over-aggressiveness on the part of Mark Allen. Now, I'm sorry, Mark, but we have two worried coaches to a great extent here tonight. You do have a lefty Giselle who hasn't won an ACC game, and he's worried that his team may not win at all if they don't get on the stick, so to speak. On the other side, Mike Krzyzewski, as you mentioned, is worried that his team did not come out aggressively, and he's also worried that they may be flat after those two tough defeats. Well, here's Bias. He has scored the first three points for the Maryland Terrapins. They are down by one. Just a, an outstanding basketball talent, this man. That's the only way to describe his multifaceted abilities. It's all even at 4-4. Tommy Amaker calls out the play as he brings it front court against the freshman Johnson. Good play defensively as the ball was knocked away by freshman Tony Massenburg. He comes up with the ball and gives it to Jeff Baxter. Pretty heady play by a freshman who just stepped up to the penetration. Eric Lewis setting a high pick, but Duke defensively not having any problems with it. Bias working on Henderson. Stops, turns, pops, and it's rebounded by Dawkins. Dawkins will pull up and let fly. Bingo. That's the Maryland transition game that we were speaking about. They got to get back quicker on defense, which they did, but no one picked up the ball hand. Or a guy like Johnny Dawkins cannot get that deep into the defensive area of the Maryland Terrapins without being picked up. Duke by two, six to four. John Johnson has the ball, trying to kick it off inside to Bias, breaking low and underneath. And Tommy Amaker whistle for the Duke personal foul. And Maryland is trying to set the precedent right now. John Johnson tried to penetrate. He was getting inside that 15-foot line that we talked about. That way, Tommy Amaker has to play him. He can't leave. He can't double-team Len Bias. There's the way it happened the first time these clubs got together back on the 4th of January. Duke won 81-75. Really not that close a game because Duke laid on a 17-point lead. Maryland made a run at the end to make it a bit more respectable. Len Bias. A man in motion off the ball. That baseline jumper, and boy, you can color it, too. He is as good a baseline shooter as there is maybe in all of basketball. Well, those great offensive players want the ball. That time he did. Here's Amaker. That's a charge. Nope, it's a block. And the basket will count, and Tommy Amaker will go for the trio. Excellent penetration by Tommy Amaker. Here he gets the ball. He makes a nice crossover move by John Johnson, who reaches around. And Len Bias actually looked as though he had his feet set underneath there, but the referee saw it another way. That he did. Amaker goes to the free throw line. 
Duke in front by a score of 8-6, to six, and Amaker tries to give his club a three-point advantage. The difficulty with that play, particularly on John Johnson's part, is that once Amaker gets around him, he can't settle for just swinging and, and going after the ball from behind. He's got to get back into the flow of the defense and maybe cut off the person who Lenny Bias left on defense. That way Amaker can't dish the ball off. Boy, is this crowd up for this game tonight? Unbelievable. 9-6, the Blue Devils in front of the Turks. Duke applies a backcourt pressure. Dawkins goes to the seat of his pants. No whistle. Jeff Baxter, the senior guard. Plays to Len Bias. Henderson with a hand in his face. Bias gets open, puts it up and in. And boy, is he on a roll early here. And David Henderson has to be wondering where his help is. That time Lenny Bias got into the paint more or less unmolested. Duke's going to have to concentrate a little bit on Len Bias. Bias doing his thing. Mike Krzyzewski, I'm sure, seated down on the Duke bench. Not surprised. Bias had 28 against him. Back on the 4th of January, Duke still won the game. Dawkins, his second long-range jump shot. Too long. Cleared off by Lewis of Maryland. And now it's in the hands of Len Bias. Just a little too early to talk about patience, but Duke has really got to shoot some higher percentage shots. They've got to get people established inside. Dumb foul right there by Johnny Dawkins as Duke tried to apply double-team defensive pressure on Bias. He gets his first. And at the moment, Duke 4 of 5 from the floor. Maryland 3 of 4. And Bias has all three of those hoops for the Turks. John Johnson against Johnny Dawkins. Freshman against senior. Len Bias picked up now by Mark Allery. Tried to kick it off inside. And Henderson did just that. He kicked it over the end line. And Henderson also did a good job of fronting Len Bias. He's not going to allow Len Bias to get the ball in the area in which he wants, unmolested. Well, here goes Bias again. That time, double team. Danny Perry, the freshman, knocks it away. Lead pass for Dawkins, who had to wait, but Henderson, the trailer. He throws it up, and he was fouled in the act. Again, Maryland's transition game is awfully slow, going from offense to defense. The turnover was made. And before you knew it, Duke got their guard, Johnny Dawkins, out there in a flash. A good outlet pass by Danny Ferry set that play up. They call the foul on Baxter, and they put Henderson on the line. And this is the guy that Duke wants to get off early. He's the type of player that scores so well against particular teams, Maryland being one of them, that if he can accomplish that, he makes Mark Allery and Johnny Dawkins so much more effective. Teams can't concentrate on those two high scorers. He had one of his greatest games, all-around games, against Maryland in meeting number one. 25 points, seven rebounds, and four assists. Early here, he has four. And Duke leads it 11-8. to eight. On the stop-and-go dribble, Baxter cannot shake free of Amaker. That's Bias in the corner. And back outside to Jeff Baxter. Baxter, one-on-one -on -one move, stops, fires. Battle for it inside, saved by Derek Lewis. Here's Bias turning and shooting, and he, just like that, has scored 10 points in four and a half minutes. And before that Baxter shot, Lenny Bias was the only Turk to attempt any shots from the floor. Uh, Jeff Baxter is a good senior. alley -oop, a little bit too high for Dawkins, but he came down with it and stuck it back in. Defensive player has not cannot turn his head, and also the person guarding the passer has to get up in the passer's face. You make that pass an awfully hard pass if you're on the man who's doing the passing. Duke 13, Len Bias 10, baseline, jumper by Massenburg, did not go, but he'll go to the free throw line and try to get him the other way. Here we see Tony Massenburg now trying to get himself into the offensive sequence for the Maryland Terrapins. The Terps have got to get more people involved. Len Bias is not Atlas. He can't carry this Maryland world by himself. Trying to do it right now, but not getting a whole lot of help, although Maryland, pretty obvious, they come down and look for him every trip down the floor. Much more success already tonight than he had against Jimmy Valvano's Wolfpack. Massenburg, 6'8", a freshman from Central High School in Sussex, Virginia. He's actually a true power forward, but playing in the middle for Maryland tonight. We're live at Cameron Indoor Stadium with a score, Duke 13, Maryland 12, and we'll be back to Cameron. In favor of Duke, and we'll take a look at the field goal shooting in the early going. Both teams, Len, shooting very well. Well, Marty, right now I look for maybe Duke to come out even with more pressure, trying to front people inside, particularly the Len Biases and even Tony Massenburg to prevent the ball from getting in there and forcing that outside game of Maryland to, to try to make themselves known. Here comes Johnny Dawkins in open court. He is tough in that type of situation. Now pulls back up on the dribble and gives it off to Mark Allery. 
And on the other side, I think Maryland's going to try to force a bad shot. Now it looked like David Henderson took one step too many and then went up to take the shot in which he drew a foul. We want to recognize the other folks working this game tonight. We mentioned the veteran Lenny Wirtz. Also on the floor, those men in stripes, Nolan Fine and David Dodds. And it is Henderson already two for two from the foul line. That foul charge against Derek Lewis. By bad shot, as we mentioned before, Maryland can test Duke's patience if they more or less pack it inside, force Duke to move the ball around a little bit. I may even look for a zone coming, coming up soon. Henderson off to an excellent start. Four out of four from the foul line. And the Duke Blue Devils have taken a 15 to 12 lead. Duke has extended their pressure, as we mentioned. They want to force that outside game. They're not going to allow Bias or Massenberg or Lewis to get the ball inside. Derek Lewis pinned to the sideline, but dribbles away from it. Allery, belly up on him. Now Johnson trying to kick it off inside to Bias and off of Len's hands, and Duke gets it back. On that particular play, the freshman John Johnson had a good part. He wanted to get it into his big man, Lenny Bias. But he might have been better off shooting the jump shot in that particular moment. Mike Krzyzewski is substituted for the first time. He brings on Billy King, a 6'6 sophomore from Sterling, Virginia, into the Duke lineup. But Billy King's a good defensive player, and he's the type of player that moves the ball around. They leave Allery open, and he shows them why they shouldn't. Two field goals, four points for Mark Allery, who over the last seven games or so has been playing about as well as anybody in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And that substitution of Billy King, who's guarding Lenny Bias now, is probably going to prove effective. Baxter, ill-advised drive into the paint. That results in a charging foul. Well, that time, I'm sure at the last time out, Coach Cazell exhorted his guards to get into the offensive flow, take the ball to the basket. That time, Jeff Baxter had the right thought, but he didn't pull up in time. Amaker made a nice, nice defensive play. Looking down onto the Maryland bench, we note that Keith Gatlin is in uniform, is seated with his teammates as you check out the all-even-up team fouls. Dawkins had a thought, elected to give it up to Billy King. Dawkins plays low, Ferry turnaround, jump shot, got it. And right now we can see a pattern developing on the defensive end for Maryland. Duke is going to Maryland's, Maryland's strong man, Lenny Bias. I'll say that Duke right now has things going its way. They have built up a lead of seven points with 13-37 remaining in the first half. It is Duke 19, 12. We'll be back right after this. Now, the home gym. And it doubles on a six to nothing run to open up a seven point advantage over Maryland at 19 to 12. Lefty Drizel called a quick timeout and now we're back at it again. Baxter and freshman John Johnson operating in the backcourt. Johnson with the ball, gives it right back to Baxter, had it skip away from him, but recovers very, very quickly. Duke has put Jay Billis in the game right now, and they switched Danny Ferry on Len Bias. They've been putting a lot of people on Bias, trying to wear him down on, on the Maryland offensive base. Bias out in the open court with that time-consuming dribble. The shot clock now down to 10. Maryland has made no effort to go to the basket on this particular possession, but now they're going to be forced to as Derek Lewis puts up the jump shot, and the rebound comes off to Billy King. Well, the Terps seem a bit unorganized on offense right now. They can't get it in the bias, and everyone else seems to be standing around. Whistle off the ball. Foul called. And now Jay Billis and, and Derek Lewis with a little push against each other. And again, we have that physical play inside. People are using an awful lot of their hands rather than their bodies. And that sometimes is a sign of fatigue, but more times than not, it's a sign of macho. I'm going to get my position. Oh, no, you're not. Duke leading at 19 to 12, and already Jeff Baxter and Derek Lewis have picked up two personal fouls. The Terps have yet to substitute. They're staying with their starters. Bias, Derek Lewis, Tony Massenberg up front. Johnny Johnson puts up the jumper, had it rejected by Allery. It is Ferry on the kick out to King. Cross court Allery, lay it up on the reverse, no good. Followed by King, got it. Good follow by Billy King. That time he got down on the break real well. Again, Maryland's defense has got to get back. Two players go down underneath the basket, and Johnson called for a charge. 
Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, the Maryland guards know that they have to take the ball to the basket against the Duke guards. However, they're getting some, making some ill-advised drives to the hoop, and they're not really looking to dish off. The defensive player has his position, and rather than throwing the ball off in midair, maybe the Duke players are holding their position on the other players. We don't, we can't see that at the moment. But rather than pulling up, they're taking a the shot. Here's Henderson taking it to the hole that rolls in. 23 to 12 in favor of Duke as they build the lead to 11, and Maryland calls another timeout. It is not going well for the Terps, and Lefty hoping this break in the action will help his club to get it going again. 12 minutes and 5 seconds remaining to be played in the first half, and the score here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, Duke 23 and Maryland 12, will return right after this message. I don't know. What are you going to do? Well, so far, Maryland has been shooting fairly respectably at uh, 50%. They're 4 for 8. But Duke is shooting 9 for 12, and they've scored the last 10 points. Um, their biggest asset has been their transition game. They've pushed the ball up on turnovers and on rebounds, and the Terps haven't gotten back. Even at times when they've blocked shots, the trail people have not gotten back to maybe grab those rebounds, and Duke consequently has gotten some balls and put them back up. Terry Long is in for Maryland, along with freshman guard Greg Narrett, and Duke gets it back. And there's a no-no. Terry Long jumped from the front court into the back court and actually violated the back court rule. As a, a junior or a senior, he should know a little bit better than that. That's a fifth turnover charge to the Maryland Terrapins. Billy King against Greg Narrett. Wants to give it up now. Billis bustling his way on Long for position inside, and Duke turns it over. Well, that's a bit uncharacteristic for the Blue Devils, but again, they have a plan in mind, and they want to go at the weaker defensive players. That time, Billy King posted up real well inside. Oh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, it was Billy King who posted up real well inside and had an opportunity. Duke gives it away for the third time. It is Maryland with the ball. They work it to Bias on the baseline. He puts it up under great duress, and the rebound controlled by Jay Billis. The Duke sixth man off to David Henderson. Billis, he finds Weldon Williams open. And there's that pattern again. The man that Len Bias is guarding is usually the man that Duke is going to look to first. In order to stop a great score, many times you go at him on the defensive end, make him work on that side. That takes a lot out of a person when he comes down on the offensive end. And Duke's lead now at 13, 25 to 12. Aaron kicks it off to Long, fading away. A Bank shot misses, and the follow shot goes by Narrett. And a little bit more of that is necessary for the Terrapins. Once the ball goes into a player and you can recognize he's ready to shoot, you've got to fight for that position. Duke is a gambling team, and sometimes out of rebounding position. There's a bid for the steal, but it goes out of bounds off Derek Lewis. Johnny Johnson comes back, along with Tom Speedy Jones, a junior from Oak Hill, West Virginia, and Tony Massenburg. So Lefty making wholesale substitutions with his club trailing 25 to 14. And when Lenny Bias out, it's interesting to see who's going to pick up the offensive load for the Terrapins. Duke has Dawkins, an amateur at the guards, Billis, Weldon Williams, David Henderson up front. Henderson with the ball, working on his man. Now plays to Dawkins, he drives, gets into heavy traffic, puts it up around, and it. Nice move in the lane by Johnny Dawkins, good penetration. With bias out of there, Duke goes back to their regular offensive play. At the other end, the shot put up and in, and a blocking foul will be whistled against Williams. So Maryland will have a shot at its first three-point play of the night with Mark Allery checking in for Weldon Williams off the Duke bench. That time Duke was maybe a bit slow getting back on defense in, in their transition game from offense to defense. Now again, here's the play. Speedy Jones makes a nice move, reverse left, right-hand layup from the left side. Williams looked as though he was set, but he may have been moving his feet just a bit. Free throw good, and the three-point play belongs to Tom Jones. It is 27-17 due. Just about at the halfway point of the first half as the Blue Devils maintain possession. Tarts picked up their defense a little bit and tried to apply some full court pressure. They almost got the turnover that time. Duke recycling its offense. Ball bounces away from Amaker. The ball gets away from Narrett. And they'll call a Duke foul on Tommy Amaker. Well, that time Maryland did get the, the, the um, turnover. Their pressure more or less forced some 
four passes in the, into the um, defensive area. Here the defensive man is blocking the passing lane. Amaker fumbled the ball a bit, and Arid was right there, fumbles it himself. Amaker making a nice attempt to get the ball back, but he was called for the foul. Narrett's got to remember, though, you get those turnovers, you got to pick the ball up, particularly if you're a big man and you're not accustomed to handling it. Greg Narrett, 6'4", freshman out of Wilmington High School in Wilmington, Ohio. He was actually recruited on two fronts in high school as a fine football quarterback. Opted for basketball in Maryland's pleased and he did. Allery head faking, Jay Billis from 15. Allery inside, and he's fouled. Well, I believe that Derek Lewis missed time that ball in that particular instance. Came right back to Mark Gallery, made a nice strong move to the basket. Sometimes you think you have good defensive position, and the ball is shot, hits the back of the rim, and bounces way over your head. Allery was the uh, beneficiary of some fortuitous bounces there. Well, Maryland has a problem now. Derek Lewis will be forced to go to the bench with his third personal foul, and will be replaced by Len Bias. Make that two fouls on Lewis, and Danny Perry is returned for Duke. Allery, eighth in the league in free throw percentage at 76.5%, shooting for his fifth point. He's also been the hottest player for Duke ever since, as a matter of fact, they played Maryland in that January so. 28-17, the Duke lead goes back to 11. In and out and in, and it's... Once again, standing at an even dozen, 29-17. The Blue Devils have the better of it with 9.47 remaining in the first half. John Johnson arrests his dribble. Needs some help, finds it in Greg Narrett. Johnny Dawkins covers him step for step. Speedy Jones flies high, they whip it to Bias. Johnson journeys into the land of the Giants, puts up the jump shot on a good move in heavy traffic. Maryland, for the first time, looks pretty comfortable offensively. They got the ball to their man, Lenny Bias, but that time Narrett and um, Jeff Baxter handled the ball really well. I'm sorry, John Johnson handled it very well. 29-19, Blue Devils. Dawkins with a fadeaway follow. Johnny Dawkins, in his career, has been absolutely poisoned against the Maryland Terrapins. He has had 20 or more points in eight of the nine previous games against Lefty's Ball Club. Having a good first half, Dawkins tonight with a total of eight. Narrett goes to the corner, plays to Long, gets it back. Well, one thing about Dawkins, he's from the D.C. area. It's nice to show in front of the home folks. Bias has the ball knocked away. Massenburg picks it off, plays it to Jones. Still a lot of time on the shot clock for Maryland. 12, 11, 10 seconds now. they got to go to it. And this is the type of offensive play that Maryland should be doing. Bias, a rare miss. Terry, the kickoff to Amaker. He'll take it coast to coast. He hits the basket, and that might be an intentional foul. It will be. The basket for Amaker counts. He will be on the line and get two shots on top of it. And that's more or less freshman inexperience. Here's Amaker driving down the middle. Johnson has nothing to do but foul. But one, he makes it look intentional. And secondly, whenever you're going to foul someone, particularly on a layup, you try and make sure they don't get the ball up to the basket. If you're going to grab them, if you're going to slap the ball out of their hands, they can't get the ball into the basket because more times than not, you're going to get a three-point and, in the case of an intentional foul, a four-point play. Len, that foul's got to be a little bit more subtle. <laughs> yeah, it does. You have to be an actor sometimes. But as a freshman, he'll learn. He's got time. 33-19. to 19. Amaker shooting for a 15-point lead. One of the things Coach Gisela is going to talk to young John Johnson about as he puts Jeff Baxter in in place of John Johnson. That's the first Duke miss from the free throw line in this one. One more coming. And as I mentioned before, Maryland on their last series brought the ball down and played very patiently, but it's a little bit more difficult to do when you're down 13, 14 points. 34 to 19 in favor of Duke. Kevin Strickland will see his first activities of the evening. Taking over in the Duke backcourt for Tommy Amaker. And it's very seldom that uh, Coach Mike Krzyzewski gets an opportunity to rest his floor leader, Tommy Amaker. With a cushion like this, it makes it a lot easier. 15-point Duke lead. They force the turnover. Dawkins comes out of the back. Three on nothing break. Would you 
believe a 17-point Duke advantage. And the loss of Keith Gatlin is really showing here. Maryland has turned the ball over too many times. And Bias goes baseline, bounces it off of his foot. Duke is on top of their game, and they're running their break to perfection. And Lefty Grizzell using his timeout. So far, to no avail. Time remaining first half, 7.57. It is Duke, 36. Maryland, 19. Stay with us. We'll be back. The worst stock market crash. Gatlin, here, Jeff Baxter, has had numerous opportunities to get the ball inside. He hasn't been able to. He hasn't been able to shed that pressure put on him by Johnny Dawkins and the rest of the, the Blue Devil Guards. You saw Duke shooting almost 74%. And they've got a 25 to 8 run against Maryland over the last eight minutes. It was 13 to 12, a one point game, and it was circle the wagon time for Maryland at that point. Kevin Strickland to Mark Allery looking low. A lot of inside movement for Duke. On the baseline, Strickland gets a little bit closer. Allery kept it alive. A sea of arms up around that basket, and Bias comes out of the pack for the turf. One thing Maryland has to do now, they've got to establish themselves again. They've got to establish their confidence by getting the ball either inside or an easy 10-12 footer. Jump shot up on the way by Derek Lewis, no good. Inside, rebound, there was a push off, no foul. The shot missed by Dave Dickerson, loose ball outside, and Maryland could not maintain possession. It's out of bounds, off the hands of John Johnson. And in the case of the Blue, Blue, De Blue Devils, when you're hot, you're hot, and the Terrapins are definitely not. That time they had an opportunity to recover that that errant rebound and they just couldn't. Duke had two and three guys on the ball and that's what happens when you're playing real well. You get to cover all the loose balls. Lefty Drizel trying every conceivable combination. We mentioned Dave Dickerson just in, a 6'6 freshman from Denmark, South Carolina. There's Billis muscling his way in for the shot that failed to go, but it failed because of the foul on Lewis. And as you mentioned, the, um, the thin aspect of the Maryland bench shows up here when you have Lynn Bias having to play center. He's guarding uh, Jay Billis inside. That time Billis may be a bit too strong for Bias. He tried to front him. Ball was lobbed over his head and Billis was inside for an easy layup. Number three on Lewis. And Len, I posed this question to you earlier tonight before we went on the air. How can Maryland be having all the problems it's having with essentially the same talent that Lefty Grizzell had at his disposal last year? Well, one thing you're missing, Marty, is the fact that Adrian Branch and Jeff Atkins were some vital cogs in the Maryland attack last year. They're gone. And to replace them, Coach Grizzell has had to put two freshmen in, in these areas. Also, the fact that he doesn't have a strong bench, when games get close down the stretch, you never see the same faces. And that hurts your chemistry. It is 38 to 19. Duke leading. Baxter looks inside. Nothing going on there. Somebody has to come to the ball. Lewis gets it, plays it inside across the lane. Bias weaving his magic, puts it up and in. And that was about as good a ball movement sequence as I've seen here tonight with Maryland on offense. That time they moved the ball around. They exploited Duke's gambling defense. Dawkins finds the middle open. And Johnny Dawkins comes right down the heart of the Maryland defense. We've got to have somebody in there. Right now, I don't believe there's a natural center playing. Well, two All-Americans shooting the lights out at the moment. Dawkins for Duke with 12. Bias of Maryland with 12. They go the other way with exactly six minutes to go. 38-21, Duke in front. Billy King, whistled by Lenny Wirtz. And a holding foul against Maryland. And as I mentioned, without a natural center in there for Maryland, Duke is able to capitalize on the wide open middle. This time, the ball is on the side. Strickland sees King, who posts up real well. Passes the ball off on the side, but he was fouled in the process. I believe Dickerson had both hands in his back. Foul is on Dave Dickerson, and on the free throw line is Billy King. Tommy Amaker and David Henderson, you saw them come back. King out of Parkview High School in Sterling, Virginia. He drops in his third point. It is a 20-point lead. Take a look at what happened this afternoon over at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, for a second straight Saturday. Beats a heavyweight as they knocked off Bobby Crennan's Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Thirty-nine to nineteen. The fact that uh, Maryland doesn't have um, a ball handling guard like a Keith Gatlin and only one real natural guard, Jeff Baxter, in there allows.
Duke to come out with three forwards. They've got David Henderson now playing in the backcourt guarding John Johnson. Make it 41-21, Duke. On the move, the jump shot off the baseline, it rolls in. Baxter hit it on the move for his first field goal, 41 to 23. Heading toward the final five minutes of first half play from Duke University and Cameron Indoor Stadium. Danny Ferry open, wide open. Jeff Baxter claims a rebound. Jay Phyllis trying to cut in front and knock it away. And for his efforts, he picks up a personal foul as first. On that last play, uh, Maryland looked a bit confused. They, they seem to have been in the zone defense, but some people were playing man-to-man. -man. We talked earlier about the 0-5 Atlantic Coast Conference start, the worst in Lefty Drizell's 17-year coaching career at Maryland. But look at the losses and the point spreads. Duke by six. Georgia Tech down by 21 in the first half and came back to actually take the lead in the final half minute, only to lose by one on a jumper by Mark Price. And they had the Tar Heels on the ropes, only to have North Carolina come back and beat them in a close one at College Park. And that's what I mean by chemistry. When you get in those tough games, you want to have the same people out there who react instinctively to each other. When you have different faces every time, it's going to be very difficult to hold together as a team. 41-23. Jump hook by Billy King. Again, Duke is exploiting the middle of Maryland's defense. Without a natural center who knows how to go to penetration, they're going to get that all night. David Henderson with a steal. Could not get the bank shot to go down, and Maryland gets it back. John Johnson spins to the end line, throws up a prayer. Dillis clears it off for the home team, and here comes Tommy Amaker. He'll stop and pop. Henderson cuts across to claim the rebound. And Maryland is very rattled at this moment. The guards know that they should take the offensive game in control and maybe go to the basket, but they're taking ill-advised shots and not looking for any other of their Maryland teammates. Duke, on the other hand, is playing good team ball, moving it around just like that. Anderson makes it in and out. It's slapped out of bounds. It'll stay with Duke. And it gives Mike Krzyzewski a chance to bring Johnny Dawkins and Mark Allery into the lineup for Billy King and Danny Ferry. There's a look at the Duke coach. 101 wins in this his sixth year as head coach at Duke University. And he's got to be pleased tonight. I, I'm, I'm sure he was a bit worried of the fact that his team had lost two in a row. Amaker, rarely will he force a pass, but he did then. Baxter tries to score against Dawkins and does. Good fast break triggered by Lenny Bias. Maryland got out there and filled the lanes really well. But as I mentioned with Mike Krzyzewski, he had to be worried that his team may come out here a bit apprehensive, but they came out smoking. And the gun is still being fired. Dawkins pulls the trigger. Billis rebounds. He'll take it back up. Missed that one. And Lewis is inside for the rebound. 43 to 25. Duke by 18. Let's see what Lenny Wirtz has for us. Apparently a foul against Duke away from the basketball. It'll be against Mark Gallery. And that's part of the net that they're trying to throw around Len Bias. Allery tried to prevent, tried to prevent um, Bias from getting to the ball, crossing the lane. There was a game you saw earlier this afternoon from Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem. Clemson and Wake Forest really went at it, with Clemson hitting the free throws down the stretch to win by three. And I'm sure Coach Cliff Ellis is relieved after those tough losses against Georgia Tech and NC State and Virginia in the past couple of weeks. Can your ranking in those statistical categories be any more impressive than those owned by Len Bias? It has been that kind of year, and boy, I'll tell you, he has seen every type of conceivable defense just about there is to play in college basketball. The opposition stacks the defenses against him simply because Maryland has really not gotten a whole lot of offensive help from anybody else. Lane violation called against Duke on Bias's first free throw. He missed that, but he gets a reprieve and hits the first of the one and one with 13 and he has number 14 and it's 43 to 27 Turks again extending their defensive pressure they've got to create some turnovers and there's one successful way to do it force the long pass well then Williams could not run it down as Duke is charged with its sixth turnover I think they were caught Duke that is was caught in a bit of a surprise Duke in front by 16 43 27 Blue Devils have had a lead as big as 20. Bias lost it. It rolls into the hands of Mark Gallery. Tommy Amaker on the move. Against the backpedaling Baxter. Jeff did a good job after Amaker shot by him. 
he reached around from behind and knocked it out of bounds. Well, you're right, Marty. He did a good job that time, but more times than not, you're going to get called when you reach around, when you wrap around as a guard. 15 turnovers total in the game, with Maryland showing nine. Allery with a bomb. Massenburg rebounds for Maryland. Baxter cross-courting to Johnson. Dangerous pass when you've got quick defenders like Amaker and Dawkins around. And good. there's another turnover for Maryland. Good defense by Mark Allery. That time he flicked the ball away from Lynn Bias, who's gonna make, about to make a strong power move inside. I don't think Mike Krzyzewski real pleased right now with a somewhat ragged play being exhibited by his club. Despite the big lead, he says timeout. And that's what we have with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. And right now, Duke in front by that impressive score, 43 to 27. We talked with Mike Krzyzewski earlier tonight, and indeed, he was concerned for Lynn uh, how his club was going to come out. He said, I think I can tell in the first five or six minutes if those losses to Georgia Tech and North Carolina really have had any effect. I don't think he has to worry about that now. No, with a 16-point lead, you definitely are going to be a little more relieved if you're the coach of the Blue Devils. But there was the danger of them coming out emotionally drained after those two losses to uh, Georgia Tech and North Carolina. Going back in the hallowed history of Duke University basketball, the great starts and the years in which they have gotten out of the game well, 1986, number one. That 16-0 start, the best in the history of this school. Previously, it was 1936, but then the turnaround, the loss in Chapel Hill, the loss in Atlanta, the one salvation that Mike Krzyzewski has now is that he knows those two schools have to come here later on in the season to play on his home turf at Cameron. And as we mentioned at the top, if they win all the games that they're expected to win, this one included, that when they do come into that, to this uh, arena, and when I say they, I mean North Carolina and Georgia Tech, the showdown should fall Duke's way, and at the end of the season, Duke could find themselves on top of the ACC peak. They've been shooting up a ton throughout the course of the game, but not of late. The Blue Devils have missed their last six field goal attempts. That might have had something to do with a Mike Krzyzewski timeout. Well, I'm sure they mentioned that, um, particularly Mike Krzyzewski mentioned that you've got a 16-point lead. Let's look for the good one. We don't have to have showtime yet. Weldon Williams swings it out to Dawkins and just ticked out of bounds by John Johnson. Lefty Drizel bounces up off the Maryland bench. He didn't think his man touched it. Well, Maryland came out in the zone this time, trying to cross Duke up just a bit. And that time, Duke had to stand back and try to recognize what type of defense was played and try to develop some passing lanes. They rested David Henderson is back in for Duke. Dawkins kicks it off to Amaker. Cross-courting to Henderson and a nice bank shot. And that's one of the things that should be a no-no against a good tight zone, and that is penetration from a guard. If he can penetrate and make it through the baseline, puts a lot of pressure on that back line, plus he can pick out the open jump shooter. 45-27, Derek Lewis turns, shoots, and sticks it in. That's the first points tonight for Derek Lewis, who's averaging almost nine points a game. And he's one of those guys that has a step to the forefront, takes a good load offensively off bias. Inside Allery. Eight points for Mark Gallery, ten points for David Henderson, a dozen for Johnny Dawkins. The Blue Devils are getting balanced scoring. Their lead goes back to 20. Inside, the shot misses by Lewis. Amaker breaking quickly up court. Well, Lewis didn't know where he was at that moment. He should have recognized by the lines on the floor he was too far under the basket. Henderson will try again. John Johnson weaving his way in and out of traffic. Curry takes a swipe at it. Still in the backcourt. And Lewis will bring it across the timeline and make it official. Baxter inside. Throws up. And shot in a second time tonight when he's been called for a charging violation under similar circumstances. Well, that's going to be hard because Baxter put his head down and drives the lane. Here on the replay, he drives the lane. Henderson moves his feet very well. That's one of the hallmarks of a good defensive player, to have quick feet and to get in position. That time Henderson did, held his ground, and Baxter ran him over. He, like teammate Derek Lewis, now have been hit with three personal fouls. Inside pass on the baseline, Billy King had it partially rejected. Dave Dickerson got a hand on it. Good weak side help by Dave Dickerson. Maryland comes back, 50, 49 seconds to go in the half. Lenny Baez trying to post up inside against Billy King, but in the last four or five minutes, the Maryland All-American has not been heard from. How about now? He got it. I think he heard you, Marty. <laughs> He has scored 16 of his team's 31. It is 47 Duke, 31 Maryland. 
the Duke's going to try and hold for one, obviously, with only 25 seconds left on the shot clock. If, if they score here, that more or less uh, stabs the dagger in just a little bit deeper. Maryland can't leave on a good note, and that will hurt them coming into the second half. They'd like to come out here with a bit more optimism, maybe on a, on a scoring note, but it's not going to happen right now. Shot clock off. Game clock down to six, five, four. Dawkins one-on-one, -on -one, throws it up, no good. Ball slapped to Quinn Snyder, the freshman. He hooks it up and in. Quinn Snyder, the freshman from Mercer Island, Washington, just off the Duke bench, picked it up and hit the jump hook to just beat the buzzer. Well, the Turks definitely need some resuscitation. Here, Dawkins makes the penetration, throws up an off-balance shot. The rebound is slapped around, which Duke's been doing all night, getting second shot. And Snyder with the left-handed prayer, he knows it's going in. He's off the court already. Well, that's the end of the big first half for Duke University. They go to the dressing room with the score. Duke 49, Maryland 31. This portion of tonight's game has been brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Every time I walk in here, I get that feeling. Basketball big name has been uh, Len Bias. 16. After that, Jeff Baxter with four and Speedy Jones with three. And that's a graphic illustration of the severe weakness Maryland has offensively. There's no balance whatsoever. Johnny Dawkins, Tommy Amaker, Danny Perry, Mark Gallery, David Henderson, jumper misses, rebound battle for OB. It'll belong to Maryland. And much more balanced scoring for the Blue Devils. Dawkins and Henderson in double figures. Allery not far away. And then there's Tommy Amaker and Billy King. Duke is extending their defense. They've picked up full court man-to-man. -man. Johnny Dawkins applying pressure to freshman John Johnson. They're going to pick up right where they left off. Johnny Johnson gives it up to Jeff Baxter. Johnny Bias, he's up front. Long and Lewis also starting the second half. So Tony Massenburg, the freshman, started the game. But Terry Long has replaced him here at the outset of half number two. And there's a, a foul call. That was a bit of a gamble by David Henderson. He was going to more or less sneak in front of Len Bias the moment the pass was thrown and try to make the play. Here, here the pass is thrown from the top, well, inside to Lenny Bias. It's not a good place to feed a post, and Henderson thought he had the steal. That was a foul that David Henderson could afford to gamble on because it's only his first of the game. And, and Coach Gazelle has started Terry Long inside because Long is about as close to a natural center as he has, and he's got to do something about the rebound deficit Maryland is suffering from. They kick it back outside to Baxter. He bends low. He decides to throw it up from 20, a little bit long, and Johnny Dawkins displays his great leaping ability. He wants to go all the way with it, and Baxter strips him of the ball. Can Dawkins catch up to him? He can, and it went off of Baxter, and it goes back to Duke. Well, that was a great recovery by the All-American Johnny Dawkins. He makes a mistake, or at least gets the ball stripped from him by Baxter, and turnabout is fair play. Here Dawkins, showing some great quickness, runs Baxter down from behind and slaps the ball off his leg. Good heads-up play. Jeff Baxter obviously heard the hoof beats. By Allery, baseline jumper, and Mark Allery has thrown in 10 points. Seems to be a foul inside. A little bit of difficulty here between Terry Long and Danny Ferry. You take a look at the turnover situation, and Duke has been playing amazingly well, having committed only seven errors up to this point. Well, they lead the league in forcing turnovers, and their turnover ratio, uh, turnovers committed versus turnovers forced, also leads the league. That foul was against Terry Long, so this could be a four-point swing for Duke, who leads by 20 and now leads by 22. And at the moment, Duke can do no wrong. Johnny Dawkins is starting to heat it up from outside. 53 to 31. Maryland still looking for its first second half points. Long pressured by Perry. Gives it off to John Johnson. Bias goes baseline. He whips Perry. He puts it up. He makes contact with Henderson. Bias with a charge. And that time, that's an example of a man who feels he's got all the responsibility on his shoulders. This time, Lenny Bias gets the ball on the wing, as we'll see in the replay. 
drives baseline. He can see David Henderson in front of him. Instead of pulling up for the jump shot, he tries for the perfect play. Tries to get it in as close as he possibly can. Didn't look to pass off. Didn't look to pull up for a jumper. He feels he's got the load on his shoulders. Dawkins lost it on the drive. It's loose. It's picked up by Henderson. You just can't do everything yourself. This is a team game. And Lenny Bias just feels like he has to do it all. Mallory got a Danny Ferry screen, but it goes out of bounds and will go back to Maryland. The Terps, especially on offense right now, look totally disorganized. And now they say Duke ball. Well, the one thing about the Blue Devils, they're not relaxing even with a 22-point lead. They're still hustling. They still put two and three people covering the board regardless. Well, they clean up that wet spot down below before Mark Allery makes the trigger pass. Way outside into the hands of Tommy Amaker. Duke would appear to be on its way to a 17th win overall and a fifth victory in the conference. Line cross court pass, Henderson pops short. Bias battled Henderson for the rebound. It's out of bounds and Maryland gets it back. Well, there's still about 17 and a half minutes left to go and strange things have happened in games where there's a shot clock. But in order for those strange things to occur, Maryland has won. They've got to get on track offensively. They've got to get the ball inside the Lenny Bias and into Terry Long and the other front court people. And they've got to stop turning the ball over. Johnson shut off, now finds an opening, puts up the short jumper. Here comes Dawkins. He's a middleman on the break. He had it swatted away by Baxter, but it's Barry. And now it's Amaker. There's David Henderson. He's all over the place. And Henderson's capitalizing on every Maryland mistake. That time, Terry Long had the man blocked out, Danny Ferry, but didn't go up with both hands. Amaker is again short on the jump shot. As Terry Long and Johnny Dawkins both sky for the rebound. And it looks like Danny Ferry has called for an infraction. Good block out by Terry Long. That time, he went up and he decided that he wanted the ball. Went up with both hands to try and grab their rebound. We'll take a look at some very impressive numbers as a means of comparison for one David Henderson, the senior from Drury, North Carolina. Last year, started only one of 28 games, and look at this season. He has started every game for the Duke Blue Devils and compare the numbers. Better free throw shooter, better rebounder, better point per game average. He is simply a better basketball player. And he's also making Duke a better team this year in a starting role. I have always said that he's the catalyst. He's the one who makes this team go. He takes a lot of pressure off of Dawkins and Allers. And I guarantee you, he's one of the players that these NBA scouts on hand are looking at. Lenny Bias, he drops one through and on top of it draws a foul. There wasn't an awful lot Jay Billis could do on that play. One thing that you can't do is play behind the Lenny Bias. If you let him get the ball inside the paint, he's got a variety of moves that can kill you. Billy King, he has come off the Duke bench. Bias on the free throw line. And That's the first points of this second half, by the way, for Maryland. I'm pretty sure, Marty, that Billy King is in there primarily to guard Lenny Bias. He's got to start changing people up. 53 to 34 after the three-point play by Bias who has scored, by the way, 19 of Maryland's 34 points. Danny Ferry, not only a good rebounder, he's a good passer and tried to become a good shooter, but not this time. The pass goes back outside to Jeff Baxter. And Henderson appealing to official Dave Dodge. He felt like there was a little undue aggressiveness on the part of Glenn Bias, no whistle, and now they go down in a heap. Three players, Billis and Ferry of Duke, Massenburg of Maryland, and a hell ball. But we have a timeout call with 15 minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the game. Duke comfortably in front here at the break by a score of 53 to 34, and we'll return after this message. Massenburg misses, gets it back, banks it in. Good second effort by the freshman. Maryland needs a little bit more of that. Tony Massenburg with four. David Henderson takes it to the hole. He's checked and fouled by Lenny Bias, who mildly argues a call with official Nolan Fine. That is in third on Bias. Well, I believe Bias recognized there was some contact, but I think he's trying to tell the official that Henderson initiated. But Henderson made a great move to blow down, blow down the sideline. Bias was a little slow getting back. 
three team fouls now in Maryland here in the second half. Jump hook way off the mark by Henderson and played by Mr. Bias. He's a little over anxious, but Duke is going back to their plan of going to the man Lynn Bias is guarding just about every time down court, trying to put some pressure on Bias. Whistle away from the ball involving Henderson and Bias, and they get Henderson. David Henderson has got to realize he's got he's got a pretty big lead in his favor that now's not the time to get involved in a pushing and shoving match. He can give up his position and reestablish it provided he gets some help. Duke had some firepower with Mark Allery back in the lineup. And here's the situation we're talking about. This is the kind of night Lenny Bias has to face every night where he gets the bump in the show. Boy, that pass right into the eye of the Tiger by Baxter. And Duke forces a turnover. Dawkins up. No good. Tips up and in by Billy King. So Billy King is a fine athlete. He's coming off the bench for Duke and providing a great spark. That time, he recognized the ball was short, made a nice tip in beat all the Maryland players to the ball. Well, Mike Krzyzewski will wax eloquent about the contributions Billy King has made off the bench this season, and he's having another good one here tonight. That time, however, he fouls as the ball went inside to Massenburg. That's true. Mike Krzyzewski will tell you that Billy King is the kind of player that will put his body on the line. He leads the team in charges taken. Here he gets his hand on the ball inside. Um, a little bit of a fumble, and it was pretty close. Baxter will play it in bounds for the men of lefty Drizel. He looks right, he looks left, he still looks, and Danny Ferry with a great save. How about that play by the freshman? Falling out of bounds, he got it back into play, and now at the other end, his jumper is long, and Billis tried to save it. It'll be Duke's ball. That was almost like one of those plays in baseball where you see a guy make a great a great defensive play and he's the first guy up the next time around and hits a home run you know something about that game too don't you i've seen you Marty. <laughs> listen to it <laughs> so duke keeps the ball as greg narrad the 6-4 freshman from wilmington ohio comes back to the maryland lineup Mallory briefly had a screen from Billis, but the duke defense breaks through it dawkins shovels it off it goes from Mallory to ferry and a three-second violation against duke good ball movement but also you have to credit the Maryland defense that time they caught a couple of players up in the air about to take jump shots they put hands up and forced them to alter their shot and look for someone else that time the pass is moving around just a bit too slowly Duke was called for three seconds make it eight turnovers now against Duke to 15 for Maryland 55 36 and another turnover charge to Maryland Ferry and how about that pass and the resulting shot by Allen well with 14 minutes left Duke is starting to feel that it's showtime right now, but that was a good defensive play by Billy King, who left his man completely on the other side. 57-36. Narrett escapes. Dawkins takes a pass inside, and Thurry nailed with a personal foul as Tommy Amaker starts back off the Duke bench. Well, if you look at the options, there's really nothing that Maryland can do right now but slay in this run-and-gun move. Here, Danny Ferry on the last play drives down the middle and dishes off. He looks like a guard, but you fail to recognize he's the center of this team. Excellent play. Young man, is this going to get better and better and better? Pass inside. Massenburg slams it home. He caught Allery with his back. That was a well executed To Johnny Massenburg, and he took advantage. Well, well slam dunk. 57-38. Dawkins up and in at the other end, and Johnny Dawkins is forward home 16. Well, if you're going to be content with trading baskets, you might as well give it up tonight, but that's what Maryland's doing right now. The lead back to 21 for Duke, 59-38. Lenny Bias takes the jumper, tries to get closer, pulls up off the baseline, misses badly. Allery tried to kick it off to Dawkins, but the pass was short, and it was intercepted by Tom Speedy Joe. I guess the Duke crowd is paying attention tonight. Foul call. Mark Gallery said, no, I didn't. Dave Dodge said, you did. And Mark Gallery has something to think about now. That's his fourth personal. Well, inside play, Maryland is getting a bit ragged. They can't seem to get the ball. The two players are fronting all the Maryland postmen, and the Maryland guards are, 
uh, wingmen outside are trying to lob the ball over that front. The only problem is the Duke defenders on the other side of the lane are recognizing this, and they're getting running starts towards that pass, and they're knocking it out of bounds or making a steal, as Billy King did a couple of plays ago. Scratch one of those fouls against Gallery. That's only three against the Duke star frontliner, but the free throw misses. The follow shot by Bias, and he dots that exclamation point. And that time, that's one of the rare times you'll find a player like Mark Gallery concentrate on the play before. I think he fell asleep just a bit and allowed Bias in there for the dunk. Bias has scored 21. Dawkins lost it as he started up with a jump shot and King saved it. Now those are the intangibles that you talk about when you talk about Billy King. He does a lot of things well on this court. A lot of them don't show up in the box score. Dawkins drops it off for King. He doesn't have anything going, so he plays to Amaker. He tries to create something for Dawkins. And Maryland getting after him now, at least on this Duke possession. The only problem with that, though, Marty, is that they're taking a lot of time off the clock. Billy King slapped it out of bounds. That's Duke's way of milking the clock. They're forcing Maryland to come out and play that pressure defense. And what Duke will do in turn is to capitalize with back doors and easy layups. Gambling on the Maryland part is not going to help them much. Indeed, Maryland has not done a whole lot about the way things stood at halftime. And they get King again. We've had a lot of fouls, Lynn, called off the ball tonight. Well, with a Lenny Bias on a Maryland team, and you know that he is their primary scorer, I think Mike Krzyzewski, who has probably put three guys or four guys on him tonight, looks at that as being 20 fouls that he could waste on a Lenny Bias, particularly when you're up this, this many points. You can always have people going at him. It's going to wear him down eventually. So Len Bias, who played his high school basketball at Northwestern High, native of Landover, Maryland, Right around the corner from the University of Maryland. <laughs> Lucky didn't have to go too far to recruit him, did he? <laughs> no, it's like picnicking in your backyard and you come up with a feast here. That's a pretty good analogy. I'm a lawyer, man. I'm I can <laughs> dig it. Bias has a total now of 23. Loose ball. Maryland comes up with it. It's thrown up by Narrett. It hangs and goes and a foul to boot against Duke. Greg Narrett, the freshman, gives him a big lift. And if you've got any um, recollection of the last game, Maryland at one point was down 17, 18 points, and they made a run at Duke. Unfortunately, it was too little, too late. But once again, Maryland extends their defense with some full-court pressure. Bias gets his hand on the ball. Narrett looks up, pump fakes, and goes up strong and completes, and will possibly complete a three-point play. He gets the two on that play. That foul, number three, against Tommy Amaker. Narrett misses. Allery rebounds for the home team. Duke has to be careful not to, not to let themselves down here, not to let their guard down. They've still got 12 minutes to go. They've got to take some time off this clock and get some good shots. Make Maryland expend a lot of their energy playing defense. Maryland is close to within 15, and if you join us late, you're saying, so what? Well, I'll tell you what, that's as close as they've been in a while. Narrett is charged with a Maryland foul. And now we'll get a timeout call. 11 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the game with a score. The Duke Blue Devils 59, the University of... Tommy Amaker looks outside and delivers it into the hands of Johnny Dawkins. You know, Marty, in both those timeouts, you can almost hear what the coaches were saying. Duke was telling the team, you got to be careful. And Dawkins kills him from the outside again. And Dawkins with 18. And Lefty was telling his team, there's a ray of light here. Let's capitalize. Let's open the window a little bit. They work it around. Maryland does inside. That's an offensive foul, and that was a good call by Dave Dodge. Not much doubt about it. Tony Massenberg lowered that shoulder, and the official had the best seat in the house to make the call, which he did. Lefty with a somewhat incredulous look on his face. He didn't obviously see it that way. And those are one of the, that's one of the situations where we mentioned at the top of the show, you've got inexperienced people in the game at crucial parts of the, in, in crucial times. And one of the problems is you can't make mistakes like that and expect to get back in the game. Well, it's reversed itself a bit. The field goal percentages from half one to half two as Kevin Strickland was called for over and back by Lenny Wirtz. And Mike Krzyzewski wants to discuss it a bit. Well, I think you caught Kevin Strickland straddling the line, but an official will call your position if you jump in the air from where you took off from, not from where you land. And that time, Strickland straddled the line and was called for a backcourt violation. 61-44 Blue Devils. Turnaround jumper by Massenburg Long. Up with the ball, Kevin Strickland. Bounces to the cutting. Henderson, he missed the slam, but he was fouled by freshman Massenburg. 
Well, Maryland's transition game has got to improve. It can't get much worse. Here's a nice play on the side from Williams. Steve Henderson on the baseline. Henderson goes up pretty high. Glenn, I've got to wonder. That was a bit of a showtime move right there. You have been in this position before. You're coveted by the pros. There must be seven NBA scouts here tonight. The players have to know that. Oh, definitely. The players are aware of it. When you're a senior and you're going well, like the three seniors for the Duke team or Lynn Bias, you're aware that every night you're going to be scrutinized by the professionals, um, professional scouts particularly. Here, David Henderson on that play, though, I really believe the only way he thought he was going to get that ball in was the slam. And I think it was a good move on his part, and it looked pretty, too. Sure did. He scored 12 as he hits the two free throws. We've got 11 minutes remaining in the game, and Duke is up the lead to 19 at 63-44. Pass off the foot of Lewis. He recovers, tried to kick it inside. The pass deflected away, and uh, another Duke University foul, Mark Allery. Well, Maryland got a break that time because it did appear that Dave Dickerson uh, slid his feet just a bit and, and traveled, but the ball was moved around pretty well. Here Lewis hits the top, Dickerson looks inside and um, had an opportunity. I believe Narrett had an opportunity to score if he wasn't fouled by Allery. Allery's just gotten his fourth personal foul. Some confusion down on the floor. Maryland most definitely is in the one and one. They correct what would have been an erroneous decision and uh, will put Narrett on the free throw line. And foul, by the way, number four against Mark Allery. He goes and sits beside Coach Mike Krzyzewski. And Duke is still keeping the pressure on Maryland. They recognize there's still plenty of time, and they don't want to let down, and they play their best ball when they're out pressuring and forcing turnovers. Merritt has come up dry on three free throw attempts. It remains 63 Duke, 44 Maryland. Duke back to the offensive end of the floor. Maryland's in a zone right now. I guess they want Duke to move the ball, maybe try to mix up their patterns a bit. They want to try and force them into some lower percentage shots. That's a way to beat a zone, and Dawkins is one of the best in the business. Particularly when they go in, those are the types of shots you want to beat a zone. The second ranking scorer in all time, Duke basketball history. Johnny Dawkins at the other end. A prayer is thrown up. And another Duke foul whistles to stop play with 10-18 showing on the clock. Well, that was good play on both ends. Bias posted up. He got the man on his hip, got the ball on the baseline and turned. But once again, as we'll see, David Henderson comes across in a good defensive move across the lane. Bias makes a nice pass to um, hit the man that, that Henderson had, had left. And that's what we talked about at the top of the show, being ready for the ball. When Duke doubles and triples Len Bias, they give up defensive position, and, and the offensive player on the Maryland side has to be ready to get the ball from Len Bias and be in a position to score. Nassenberg with the hit gets his club back to within 20, 65-45. Danny Ferry, after getting a blow on the bench, returns to action, and Nassenberg with one more coming. He has scored seven and got the roll. It has been a rebound night of sorts for the Duke Blue Devils. Maryland seems to be right now in a, some type of triangle defense. Jumper by Strickland, uncontested, but he missed it. Billis hooks it up and in. He's fouled. Well, that's a good rebound by Jay Billis. Duke seemed to catch Maryland and recognize that little triangle and two defense where Jeff Baxter and I believe um, Derek Lewis were playing someone man-to-man. -man. I'm sorry, Jeff Baxter and uh, David Darrett were playing someone man-to-man. -man. And Duke moved the ball around well. Billis got good rebounding position. And once the ball went up, he was there to get it and lay it back in. Tony Massenberg got him. Billis shooting from the free line. Ball hangs on the rim, comes off. It's slapped out by Maryland. And let me correct myself. That was um, Tony Massenberg and Dave. Dave Dickerson. It was Dickerson who was playing man-to-man -man in that triangle, and that time he allowed his the man he was guarding, who happened to be Billis at that time, to get in for the easy, easy position. Indeed. Dave Dickerson saw brief first-half action. He's back in there now. Maryland's back in the man-to-man. -man. Here's Perry shooting. He rattled at that time, having it come out, and uh, who did they get? Apparently Billis. A little bit overly aggressive against the likes of Lenny Bias. And with that triangle defense, I think Coach Fidel was trying to pull out some of the some of the uh, cobwebs, I guess, because I haven't seen a team of his play that in many years. I believe the last time may have been when I was a senior and he played Wake Forest one year. 
You got to try something. Johnny Amateurs will spell Johnny Dawkins. Well, Duke has Amaker on the floor along with Kevin Strickland, David Henderson, Danny Berry, and Jay Billis. First appearance of the night for David Gregg, a 6'9 freshman out of Northwestern High School in Hyattsville, Maryland. He has now joined his teammates on the Maryland front line. Lenny Bias gets his 24th point, 24 of Maryland's 47. Well, with the substitution of Greg, I, I think it's a good idea to now start giving people who normally don't get an awful lot of time, give them some time in a game like this, because it'll help you down the stretch. Give them the experience, particularly against a team like Duke that throws so many defenses at you, so much pressure at you. It's a good, it's a good learning experience. Duke leading 67 to 48. We're under 10 minutes remaining here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Henderson double team, and Maryland got the ball, but traveling ball against Dickerson. Good pressure by the Maryland Tarpons, but a bit of over-anxiousness caused a turnover. This is, these are the times when you create a turnover, you get a loose ball, you've got to catch the ball first. You can't do anything unless you've gotten possession. Both coaches have played a lot of folks in this game. That is a normal pattern for Mike Krzyzewski, but uh, again, Lefty Grizzell doing everything in his power to try and find something that will click. And he's not been successful tonight against a superior new team. Nassenberg tried to come up with a big defensive play, but was unable to do it. Well, here Maryland was playing their triangle defense again. That time, along the baseline, Duke player got the, got the ball inside, and uh, the reverse layup was fouled by Tony Massenberg, and I believe that's his fifth. Indeed, Tony Massenberg leads with 9 minutes and 18 seconds remaining. He'll be replaced by Derek Lewis. That was good movement by Kevin Strickland. When you recognize that type of defense, you still play it as though it were a zone. Strickland, uh, more or less as stealthy as he was in that place, sneaked along the baseline and found the, the little crease inside, and the wingman hit him inside with a nice entry pass. Strickland looking for his first points. And the sophomore from North Surrey High School in Mount Airy, North Carolina, gets it. Sixty-nine forty-eight. The Blue Devils will sleep well on this night. Duke now is in a two-three zone. They're going to they're going to slow Maryland's pace down. Well, Bias is uh, displayed simply a virtuoso performance for the Maryland Terrapins. He has scored twenty-seven points, one less than he had against Duke back on the fourth of January at College Park. And it has to be tough on a young fellow like that because he has to assume almost a total scoring load, and he's done it in fine fashion. 69 to 50 for the score. David Henderson wanted to go to Billis. He was checked inside. Wants to go and does to Danny Ferry. He turns on his man, puts up the bank shot. No good. The tip fail by both Strickland and Billis. The Duke will maintain possession of the ball. Well, Maryland at this moment... They are playing good defense, but they've got to do something about those second shots. Duke has been getting all the good offensive rebounding position. Here's Ferry taking it to the hole. Put it up too strong. Rebounded by Baxter of Maryland. I like Derek, Danny Ferry, particularly from the top of the team. He is not ashamed to put the ball on the floor, as a lot of big men are, and take it to the basket. I'll tell you, with this outstanding crop of seniors due to graduate at the end of the year for Duke, he will be called upon for more offensive responsibility by... A sizable margin next year. David Gregg scores for Maryland. 69-52. And another thing about Danny Ferry, he's fortunate to be playing with these great seniors on a great team. It allows him to experiment and play, play another type of game. Has not been sharp in his shooting tonight. And that's an offensive foul. Well, that time he was a bit over anxious. I think maybe a little disgusted with the fact that he missed that long jumper and he wanted to make something happen. Here he sees an opening. He believes there's an opening. Lynn Bias moving his feet, gets good position, and Ferry careens into him. Billy King, David Henderson, Mark Gallery have come back into the Duke lineup, and they say timeout. Time remaining, 7 minutes and 52 seconds with a score. The Duke Blue Devils control as they have been most of the way, 69 to 52. Hi, Al McGuire here. I'm at the Big D in Texas. Sunday night, and then two 
conference games later on next week. Clemson here Wednesday. They'll be playing in Greensboro against Wake Forest next Saturday afternoon. While for Maryland, they'll have Wake at home on Wednesday night and a non-conference affair with the defending NCAA champion Villanova under Roly Massimino next Saturday in Philadelphia. Lenny Bias baseline and beyond, and he scores again. Nice move by Bias, and I am amazed, though, that the, the Blue Devils came out picking up full court. I, I don't believe they know how to play any other way. Just a great, great pressure team. Duke back again, or Maryland back again, within 15 of Duke. Len Bias with 29 points tonight. David Henderson gets backcourt pressure. Duke beats it. Dawkins kicks it off to King, and he tried to do a 360, but got hammered in midair. Well, on that fast break, it was a good three-on-one. Um, Dawkins made a nice pass. He looked off the defender, dished it off to Billy King on the side. Here we see Dawkins looking off the defender, looking right, throwing left. Billy King, I believe, got caught under the basket a little too far, had nothing to do with it, but was fouled and was bailed out of that play. Score foul number two against that man, freshman Dave Dickerson. King Law. is both of them. Duke comes up with nothing as a result of that possession, and Maryland comes back. Well, with still a 15-point lead, Duke is going to play pressure defense. They're going to make Maryland work for everything, and I think they want to close the door in the next few minutes. And he bias triple team, gets off the jump shot to short. Allery had it swatted away, and Dickerson got it. Well, as you mentioned, Marty, Lenny was Lenny Bias was triple team that time. I don't know if that shot was advisable. However, when you're accustomed to taking the load, you feel like every shot you get, you have to take. Here's, here's the type of attention Bias draws. Three men, Maryland players fought for a position, but they still didn't get the rebound. I believe that once you see a triple team like that and you believe a player, your teammate like Lenny Bias, is going to take the shot, you've got to get to that position even earlier than some of the Maryland players did. You've got to establish that position so that if the ball does come off, you're there. And you need two guys, three guys to cover that area. Three men were on Len Bias, so that means that at least two guys were open. Len, considering all the defensive attention that that young man draws, I don't know how he'd react if he got an open baseline jumper. Well, I'm sure he would have his mouth agape and wonder <laughs> what he's supposed to do with it, but, but something tells me within a split second he'd know, he'd know exactly what to do with it. Mallory hits one, but misses the second. He enjoys at the moment a 13-point night, and Duke leads 76 to 70-54. Under seven minutes remaining. Bias gets it back to the basket, swings it back outside. Derek Lewis gives it up to Dave Dickerson. Here's Amaker tipping it away, but Baxter runs it down. Now it goes to the baseline, Bias, and he hit it fading away and on an angle. Well, that time Jeff Baxter made good penetration, looked for Len Bias all the way. Jeff Baxter didn't even look at the basket and found his All-American teammate. 31 for Bias. Duke misses. Bias has it batted away, and there's a late whistle by Len Wurst, but a good call. Looked like Bias took a shot in the area his left cheek and David Henderson he doesn't agree with the call but he's the man they called it on well here's a shot by Amaker the rebound comes off Bias goes up high to get it and there you see Henderson strips he tries to flip underneath Bias and actually the other two officials the baseline official and the sideline official closest to the Duke bench were actually blocked blocked from that call and Lenny Wirtz did the thing that he's supposed to he waited to see if they make the call if they didn't he saw it he makes the call has been perfect from the free throw line. He's 10 out of 10. In addition to scoring 32 points, he's also hauled down six rebounds. I don't know what more you could ask from him that he has not already given. All of a sudden, it's a 12-point game. 70-58. Dawkins reversing and missing. And a foul. And that's on Henderson. Two quick fouls on David Henderson. And it seems like David Henderson's letting himself get carried away with the enthusiasm out here. Maryland tries a full court press, and Duke beats it very well, comes down with Johnny, Johnny Dawkins on the right side, and Dawkins tries a reverse layup, 
in a crowd, and, and I believe Henderson fouled on the rebound. I don't need to tell you, we still have time to go for Maryland. They're down by 12, and there's time out on the floor with 6.10 to go. Duke 70 against the rebounding Terrapins at 58. And they can get even closer if the freshman Dickerson can hit the free throw. And as we mentioned before, Marty, Maryland has come back. They came back from 21 against Georgia Tech. They actually came back against this Duke team in January from a 17-point deficit only to lose by six points. And I'm sure Duke is aware of that. They're not going to let up one bit. It is a 10-point game. And all of a sudden, it starts to get interesting. Maryland extends their defense right now in a full-court press situation. Amaker shoots on the move, and he gets a big basket for his ball club. And Tommy Amaker has got to do that, particularly on this press situation, because he's going to have to be a threat now, and Maryland's going to have to spread their defense a little more and guard him. Those in foul trouble, it has obviously been a very physical basketball game. And Duke really picking up the tempo defensively now. They know they might have their hands full. The ball is loose, and the battle won by Allery, but he could not save it. Maryland will keep it. Up until that point, Maryland had shown a little bit of poise. A number of times, they had lanes to the basket, but rather than drive down those lanes, they opted to move the ball around and look for the better shot. Unfortunately, that ball was tipped and kicked around, but they've got another chance. Boy, waiting for the inbounds pass to be made, and it's a looping pass outside of Dickerson. He gets it right back to Baxter, and he shows good decision in bringing it back outside. The turnaround jump shot by Greg misses, and Bias called for an obvious foul. He knocked down Mark Allery. Well, for one thing, Duke showed a nice 2-3 zone. Maryland seemed poised to go after a man-to-man -man and get the ball inside, but recognizing the 2-3, they backed it out and it forced them to move the ball around. Here, once the shot is taken out, you see Allery and Bias fighting for position. Allery had his arm wrapped around Bias' chest. Bias had his arm wrapped around Allery's neck. Allery seemed to take the worst of that particular encounter, and he was the beneficiary of that call. And Len Bias, as a result of that foul, is one away from the early gate. And you know, that's a difficult call to make when you have people wrapped up and tangled up. Because one guy falls, sometimes, you know, you have to wonder if he lost his balance or if he was pushed down. The officials saw Lenny Bias push him down and made the good call. 74-60 in favor of Duke on two big hits by Mark Gallery. Mallory with 15 points. Johnny Dawkins, a high point man for the Blue Devils with 20. Inside to Bias, pinned on the baseline. He made the most of a difficult situation. And what more can you do? Here's a guy who's gotten the ball on the baseline a number of times in his double and triple team. He's still slippery enough to slide through the double team and lay it in. Now Duke trying to beat the 10 second count, which they do. Henderson started baseline, pulls it back outside to Dawkins. The balance pressure is definitely been fired up just a bit. They've come out and they've been placing a lot of pressure on the Duke guard, forcing them to give the ball up ahead of them to the big men along the baseline. And Duke now wants to slow the tempo just a bit. They're going to look for good shots. And if not, they're going to at least milk that clock to a five, eight seconds. Duke is up by 12 and they are starting now to use some time indeed. The shot clock at four. The pass to Allery. Good pass by Tommy Amaker. He set it all up. That was a spot pass. Ab I mean, Allery wasn't even in position, but Amaker and Allery read each other very well. Amaker dropped a little bounce pass to the spot he knew Allery was going to occupy. 76-62, Derek Lewis. The jumper coming by Dickerson. The long rebound. Battle for it, controlled by Ferry. Throws it away at center court. Baxter quickly back with the ball. He'll throw it up, and it misses. And there's Dawkins, and he's fouled. Baxter got it. Baxter in a little bit of frustration compounded his error. There wasn't a very good shot at that particular time. They've got to look now for Lenny Bias. He's the hot man. Here Baxter drives. He tries to slide and shoot over the big man, Danny Ferry. Misses the shot in the compounded. He fouls the rebound to Johnny Dawkins. One and one. So Jeff Baxter is another one of a growing number of players performing with four personal fouls. We mentioned earlier, Johnny Dawkins, the second all-time scorer in Duke basketball history. He is averaging 18.7 points a game if he maintains that average. 
he will catch Duke's all-time scorer, Mike Jaminski, in the final regular season game. And Michael Jaminski is an old teammate of mine with the New Jersey Nets, and he's very proud of that record, but I'm sure he feels it couldn't have it couldn't happen to a more um, accomplished and, and more talented athlete than Johnny Dawkins. There's another loose ball situation and goes against Maryland. Curry comes up with it, plays to Tommy Amaker. 3.40 to go. Duke by 15 and possession. The Blue Devils lead 77-62. And here's a situation where the loss of a Keith Gatlin means so much to Maryland. Keith Gatlin is a good offensive player. He averages almost 10 points a game. He's the type of guy who could take a Tommy Amaker and maybe back him down. Keith Gatlin is 6 feet 5 inches tall, a good ball handler, and, and a point guard, and Tommy Amaker is a point guard. In a man-to-man -man situation, Gatlin could make this a very nice, rough night for Tommy Amaker if he had the opportunity. Duke continues to kill time on the clock. Dawkins, he just got out of control and lost the ball. Back comes John Johnson for the Maryland Terrapins, and he replaces Dave Dickerson. While it's late in the game, and by the score, it doesn't seem to be a crucial situation. We have a few freshmen out there once again, and at the times when Maryland really needs some experience and some leadership. Greg drops it off for Nary, the high bank shot, too strong. Danny Ferry, underhands, two-hand style to Tommy Amaker. Well, Maryland made a brief run. They got to within 10. But Duke hitched themselves up by the proverbial bootstraps and have shot back out in front by 15. And the nails are about to be placed in this coffin tonight. Terps can go back, though, and they can recognize their mistakes. Maybe they can learn from some of these things. The turnovers hurt them an awful lot, and the fact that they could not get anyone to step forward and help Len Bias in the offensive category. 13, 12, 11 seconds on the shot clock, 220 remaining in the game. Tommy Amaker lets it fly. Almost throws up an air ball, but he gets his own missed shot back and misses again. Derek Lewis stripped by Amaker, but Maryland will get it. That's a good hustle by Tommy Amaker trying to, um, to uh, atone for that error. And the error was the fact that he got the offensive rebound. And knowing that the time is more or less two minutes left, he could have brought it back outside. But I guess at this point in time, everybody wants to pump up their scoring average just a little bit. And Amaker is such an unselfish player, you can't blame him for looking for the shot. Johnny Johnson looking low, as all the Maryland players do for Lenny Bias. He finally gets the ball and hits the shot, an exact replay of the one he hit a few minutes ago. Well, he's hiding along that baseline. He's getting behind the defenders, and when you get to a blind spot of a defender, particularly along the baseline, there's very little he can do once you get the ball, except possible foul you if you go up as strong as a Lenny Bias. All he's done is score 37. But precious little help. An ongoing problem for Maryland. Here's Johnny Dawkins in the paint. Foul call. Len Bias said he traveled, and he worked, said he was fouled. And the perpetrator, Greg Nary. But now you can see that the Maryland Terrapins are, are just about totally exhausted. They're not playing defense with their feet anymore. Once a guy drives the lane, like Dawkins here, everybody's reaching. There's one reach, there's another reach. Once you start reaching rather than moving your feet, that's a sign of fatigue. And the Terrapins have been through an awful lot this evening at the hands of the of the um, athletic and pressure-packed Blue Devils. 77-64 Duke with a minute 27 remaining. Dawkins fires and he throws in his 22nd point. Lenny Bias, check these numbers out. 18 field goal attempts, 13 hits, perfect from the free throw line, 11 for 11. For that All-American, it seems like it's all in a night's work. Sometimes it seems he's playing on a slightly higher plane. Now he shows a little bit of his ball handling skills here. 78-64, that's a facet of the game that he has had to work on at Maryland, and he's done it. Dawkins will take it all by himself, but the foul came before the shot. He'll get two, and the foul called against John Johnson. And that's going to be Johnson's second intentional foul, and I have to believe that in practice coming up, Coach Gazelle is going to spell out the rule to him. And here he is again. He puts his hand on Dawkins. Now, I don't know if, if the rule makers intended to have everything called an intentional foul when there's a breakaway layup. Obviously, Johnson put his hand on, on the players, and you have to call a foul, and you possibly have to call an intentional because he didn't go after the ball, but that should be the, the operative word, whether you're operative situation, whether you're going after the ball or not. And so far, the referees have taken that to heart. Well, he certainly didn't go after Dawkins as aggressively this time to get charged with a two-shot foul as he did earlier in the game. 
It is now 80-64 in favor of Duke. With only 65 ticks of the clock remaining. Bias fires short. Villa steps in front of Lynn to get the rebound and plays off to Quinn Snyder. Johnny Dawkins in a hurry. Plays to Strickland. He banks it up. It rolls off. Offensive foul against Kevin Strickland. Well, that's good position there by the Maryland defender. And Duke, they, they really feel that it's showtime now. If Dawkins comes down with another, look away and hand the pass off. Good defensive position is held by Narrett. And um, he gets the call. Now Mike Krzyzewski has now cleared his bench. John Smith, the freshman, and the junior from Whitehall, Ohio, Martin Nestle, have entered the Duke Blue Devils lineup. They'll inbounds again, the Terrapins do, with 54 seconds on the clock. All the starters now are out. Quinn Snyder, Kevin Strickland, John Smith, Martin Nestle, Jay Billis. Doing it for the Duke Blue Devils. The jump shot by Derek Lewis, way off the mark. And who committed the personal foul? It's going to be against the Blue Devils. And it'll put a Maryland Terrapin on the free throw line. John Smith gets his first. And this, this is one of the most difficult times for a player, particularly a Lynn Bias, to come out here and play. All Lenny is playing for now, I'm sure, is to uh, put on a great show not to say that he hasn't so far but he's going to go for the all-time scoring mark and anything else he can right now there's really no incentive and for the other starters it's the same thing the only thing you can do right now is regroup if you're lefty gazelle and come back for the next acc tilt 39 for len bias kevin strickland cautiously from backcourt to frontcourt to quinn snyder to jay billis they swing it around as Maryland is forced to chase, but it's pretty much academic at this stage with 25 seconds to go. Billis misses. The loose ball finally picked up by Maryland, and the ball hit the sideline. Well, nothing else has been going right, so you can't expect that call to go right for Maryland. But I have to say, Coach Mike Krzyzewski has to be very, very happy with the way his team has responded, bouncing back from those two losses. They played superlative defense. They got the ball to the people they wanted to, and they executed very well. I'm sure he's quite happy, and with Harvard coming up, it's another game that they can tune up and get ready for this Georgia Tech and North Carolina showdown. Ten seconds to go. Len Bias going for a 40-point night, and he does it with a vengeance. Two seconds, one second. It is all over. The final score from Cameron Indoor Stadium here at Duke, the Blue Devils 80, the Maryland Terrapins 68. This portion of tonight's game has been brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name in case everything else is just a light. Gatlin will help Maryland very much, and I think Larkins will help Wake Forest possibly even more because he's a scoring threat, and they don't have many of those. Arthur Larkins is matched up against Lennon Bias man-to-man. -man. Baxter didn't care that time. He drilled it, but Wake was in a diamond or a box and one against Lenny Bias. Baxter, who doesn't get uh, too many shots closer than 17 feet from the basket, hits his first. There's a miss outside by Rod Watson. Maryland with the rebound. Gee, so much for milk in the 45 seconds. Like That's that. right. Only milked about four seconds off of it that time. <laughs> Baxter faking the long shot. Gatlin, good pass. Derek Lewis tries for the jam, but he'll get the foul at the baseline. That was the hardest jam up against the rim, I think, that I've ever seen. My good drive by Lewis, good penetration to the basket. Klein moved underneath slightly, and that caused Lewis to miss. But the first couple of possessions that Maryland has had, Mike, they've been very aggressive with the basketball. They haven't been going to Lenny Bias, and I think that's a good sign. Uh, you got to look at uh, Mark Klein. The foul was actually on Arthur Larkins, who reached in on the way by. That's one on Larkins, and he has fouled out of three ball games this year. Forced to play forward 6-4, even with great leaping ability, can get you in some foul trouble. Lewis, free throw line, has that line drive motion, got it down, and it's 4-0 Terps. 
And here Maryland's going to show you that they don't think it's impossible to press Wake Forest. I talked to the Maryland coaching staff before the game. They're going to double team when a player other than Bogues has the ball. You won't see him trying to double team Bogues. Bogues all the way down the lane. Layup is good. And we've got the foul. It's going to be on Gatlin. Bogues will get the bucket and a chance for a three-point play. He makes almost everybody who's in front of him look silly. Boy, he sure does, Mike. He just blew by Keith Gatlin. Gatlin was trying to stay away, but Bogues was so quick he got by him, made him look bad. That's one on Gatlin. And Muggsy Bogues will go to the free throw line. He is the number one assist man in the country. Almost eight and a half a ball game. He has a three-point lead, and Maryland's lead is down to one. Here's the press. And there's where Bogues lack of height can get him in trouble. You just lob the ball over him rather than put the ball on the ground. That's true, Mike, but then somebody might try to dribble it up the court, and that's his, his arena. Terry Long starting at center for Maryland. He has been in and out of Lefty Grizzell's doghouse. All right, now Wake Forest is in a straight 2-3 zone this time down the court. And Bias hasn't touched it yet. There's Long on the pass from Lewis, a little too far for him. Good idea by Lewis. He needs to make a better pass. And Bias has it, not looking to shoot. Good cross-court pass to Baxter. Shot clock is at eight seconds. Gatlin gets it to Baxter. He goes to the baseline. Three seconds and has to force it. Won't go. Long kept it alive. Bogues almost had the rebound and Gatlin got it. Good defense by Wake Forest, Mike, but you saw one of their weaknesses there. The defensive rebounding just wasn't there. Maryland banged the boards pretty well. Gatlin from 19. 6-3 Maryland in the first two points for Gatlin. Once again, those outside shots, everything looks great when they go in, but they're not always going to go in. That's for sure, Mike. Maryland would be well advised to try to penetrate against that zone and create some play inside. Watson and Larkins working outside. Now Klein comes all the way out near the center circle to take the ball. There's Derek Lewis, Mike. We've seen him a couple of times this year guarding his man in a man-to-man -man situation, and Maryland was in man-to-man -man that time. But sometimes when Lewis comes out at half court to guard his man, he keeps his hands on his man's on his man's uh, hips, and he got called that time. That's number one on the sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland. This is Bogues who played his high school ball at uh, Dunbar, Baltimore. Look how wide a berth Gatlin gives Bogues, but then you can notice in your screen that Wake Forest practically clears the middle for him to give him a lot of room to operate. Bogues almost in backcourt. Gatlin just trying to lay off, making sure that he doesn't get inside. And even giving four or five feet to him, he's like, will just take that first step and gun right past him. This is Watson, good shooter. Missed that one pretty badly, as a matter of fact, and Lewis outlets to Baxter. He'll pull it back. Bias, who had 41 Saturday, his first shot almost an air ball, just barely nicked the rim. Almost took Mark Klein's head off. Close to Klein. Maryland began in a man-to-man -man defense, and the key matchup is going to be Gatlin against Bogues. The center is Diver, number 45, asking Bogues to repeat that last play. Couldn't hear him. Now Bogues trying to cut down the middle as they did open up that middle again, and a loose ball knocked out of bounds. Lefty Grizzell up applauding as they forced the turnover. Bogues is insisting that he did not throw the ball out of bounds. But he was the last guy that touched it. Good help that time by Maryland. If they're going to come and help Bogues, Wake Forest is probably going to get some open jumpers in the corners. Gatlin and Baxter, the Maryland guard. Now Wake Forest switches again. Larkins is back to that box and one against five. Bogues with a long rebound. He's led the team once in rebounding this year. Gets it off to Watson for the baseline jumper. Won't go. Wake Forest hardly ever gets an offensive rebound. If they do, it seems like it's Bogues. Lewis to Baxter. Trying to penetrate. Bogues got his hand. Pass. Bogues got his hand on that, Mike. He dropped down in perfectly and was able to knock the ball away. And it was out off Maryland. Please report to the ticket office in the lot. Klein will inbound, and this is going to be the first sub for Bob Stack. He'll send a freshman guard, Cal Boyd, into the ball game. And he's also got Alan Dickens, who has been with the team for three games now. He's a pre-med student who just walked on after all the personnel problems this club has had. Played 12 minutes in the each of the two games he's been in. That's how bad it's got. And it's got to be a thrill for him. Maybe maybe not now as much as it'll be later. He can tell people that he played in the Atlantic Coast Conference. He has scored one basket in two games. Good job by Baxter. Reaches out to kick it away. They recycle the 45-second clock. That's that circular motion 
fact that the official makes for his finger. 15.55 to go first half. We have a timeout. Maryland 6, Wake 3. without the express written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Violet Teleproductions is prohibited. Terps up 6-3. Four minutes and five seconds into the first half of play. Watson has uh, been the primary offensive threat for Wake Forest, but he's 0 for 3. Bogues has the only points on the three-point play. There you see Maryland coming to double-team the ball when Bogues does not have the ball. Having the floor spread very wide, that gives both room to operate, to penetrate inside, and to kick the ball to an open man. Now Gatlin will only come out so far on both. The last thing he wants him to do is penetrate. They'll give him an outside shot. Here's a whistle and a foul away from the ball, and it's going to be called on the junior Allen Dickens, number 55. That's his first. The other Deacons aren't just standing around while Tyrone Bogues is dribbling the ball, Mike. They're trying to set screens for one another and spring somebody open, and Dickens got caught that time. He was still moving as he set the screen. Gatlin against some Wake Forest pressure. And you'll notice that Maryland gets rid of the ball whenever Bogues comes by. They don't want to dribble it up the court against Tyrone Bogues. Straight 2-3 zone by the Deacons. Good touch pass by Gatlin with Long didn't want to shoot. Maryland moving it very, very well right now. Gatlin to Baxter. He's left open. Got it. Maryland shooting the ball very well early in the game, Mike. But again, all those points are from the outside. 8-3. Maryland. Bogue trying to penetrate. There's the turnover as Lewis gets it out to Gatlin. Nice pass to Baxter. That's the difference Keith Gatlin can make in this ball club. Terry Long made an excellent defensive play. He stood his ground against Bogues. Bogues lost the handle on the basketball. Maryland's doing the most important thing, Mike, against the team that plays slowly, and that is you get the lead, and that changes the game drastically. Dan, you talked about possessions in the, in the game plan before we uh, started. They scored once in seven possessions. There is Terry Long coming behind Gatlin to swat it out of bounds. Wake emphasizes the possessions. There you get a look at Terry Long. Now here's Bogues dribbling down. Now you notice there's no other Deacon in the picture, and if Bogues is going to penetrate, he's so small that he's not really going to be able to shoot the shot against heavy defense. His teammates have to get in positions where they can score once he makes that penetration. Pretty good defense by Gatlin because Bogues had to double clutch. Gatlin would have blocked it if he put it up the first time. He gave Long time to come over and help out. Cal Boyd there, number 10, is a good outside shooter, as is Klein on the right wing right now. The Deacons seem to be standing around watching Tyrone Bogues, and they're not going to be successful in that man. This is Klein getting by Lewis. Good penetration, but he missed the shot. Rebound follow by Dickens. Mark the three med walk-on. Mark Klein is not a person of great quickness, but he showed you there with sort of a ponderous move to the basket what kind of damage the penetration could do. Nobody blocked out Dickens. Good pressure, but Maryland does get it in the front court. It's 10-5 Terrapins with 13-29 to go first half. Long in the lane, wants the ball. I can't get it to him. Good active zone by Wake Forest. Now Bias gets a good pass to Long. That's Bogues. He reached in and knocked it away, but back to recover. Can't dribble the ball in there against Wake Forest. Good pass to Long, and he's fouled by Dickens. Dickens doesn't like to call, Mike. That's two fouls against Dickens, but Maryland has shown a couple of times that they can move the ball very successfully. That time, they got the ball to Long in a position where he didn't have to dribble, and he drew the foul. Gatlin, Tobias, who does not have a shot in this ballgame. Oh, he does have one. Nick the rim. Now he has two. And that one didn't touch it at all. <laughs> that went where it was supposed to. First two for the leading scorer in the ACC. Maryland's looked good so far, Mike. They've done what they had to do against this style of game that Wake Forest is playing. Trying to turn it to their advantage. You notice how Baxter had an opportunity to double team, but didn't dare double team against both. Bogues, they've got him isolated on Gatlin. Gatlin partially blocked that shot, and Bogues double pumped and got it in. That's an awfully tough shot, Mike, and if Maryland is going to limit Wake Forest to, to that style of shot, then I think the Terrapins are, have to be pretty comfortable. 12.25 to go first half, a five-point lead for Maryland, and the Terps have been up by as many as seven. 
Maryland's playing with a lot of confidence, Mike. They look like a different team than we've seen the last couple times out. Playing like they did against North Carolina, Georgia Tech. They did a loose ball, knocked out of bounds. It'll be out to Maryland. I think Bogue's got a hand on that one, too. Bogue just stands in there and waits till you come down and then swats that. Watson will come back in for Bob Stack, and Alan Dickens will go out. Maryland makes its first substitutions. Gatlin and Lewis will go to the bench for Maryland. John Johnson checks in along with Tom Jones. That's John Johnson, the freshman out of Tennessee. Be interesting to see how he and Baxter are able to handle the ball against Wake Forest. I thought Gatlin did a good job when he was in there. Baxter goes to more of a, uh, a point position now. And Johnson takes over the shooting guards. Something I couldn't do, so I like to see it. Lucky if I could hold it with two hands. Shot clock is down to 13 seconds. Johnson had the shot, didn't want to take it out, penetrates and banked it. In. Boy, what a nice move by Johnson, and that's the penetration against the zone. And look, here comes Wake Forest. And here's a foul. It's going to be on Johnson, and that was a nice burst of speed down there by Larkin. Bogues and Larkins really got down the court. You get a chance to see the end of the play. Wake Forest just beat Maryland down the court. Good foul by Johnson because that was a dunk. Two, please. Relax. Larkins will go to the line. Another uh, good freshman as Bob Stack tries to rebuild his talent pool. Got a Sarasota floor. Rated as one of the top players in the state as a high school senior. Like he had such a good game against Georgia Tech in the Did game that he hurt his foot. One of the things that has to have Bob Stack scratching his head just when guys start to come along, they seem to go down. Or leave. That's Dybert back in. Of course, well-documented case of Mike Scott, the 6'11 freshman, the only true center they'd had in uh, several years at Wake Forest. He got homesick, went back to Green Up, Kentucky. Free throw is good by Larkins. It's 14 to 9. And we've got another timeout on the court with 11 minutes and 26 seconds to go. Affair that we expected. It's Maryland 14, Wake Forest 9. All of them there, the shooting percentages. And I think the one thing you have to notice with Wake Forest is that they almost always get fewer shots. And they must shoot much better percentage just to match the other team. They certainly haven't shot well enough in this game so far, Mike. In Maryland, they're shooting very well, even though Lenny Bias only has one field goal. Maryland has not been relying on Bias today as they have done recently, and they've had some success looking for other people. Baxter calls out the play. He and Johnson are the guards. Gatlin started the point guard. Did a pretty good job when he was in there. Wake in the 2-3 zone once again. Jones back to Johnson, penetrating. That's two for really, two. That's really a nice play, Mike. The ball went into the inside against the zone. The zone collapsed. Speedy Jones hit Johnson and then penetrated again. That's really pretty play against the zone. 16-9, now Baxter has the task of being on Muggsy Bogues. This is Klein, he's guarded by Bias. Great pass to Watson, and Watson missed another shot. Rebound along. Watson now 0 for 4. He's 0 for 4, and he's been such a big part of the offense recently for Wake Forest. They can't afford that. Johnson just collides with everybody. The foul is going to be on number 45, Paul Dybert. Johnson once again showing the ability to penetrate into this Wake Forest defense. Klein is in pretty good position for a charge, but Divert coming over to help out was the guy who committed the foul. And again, Wake Forest does not have a lot of depth or strength inside, and every time Maryland takes it inside, either passing it in or penetrating it, puts a great deal of pressure on the Deacon. Johnson, the Tennessee High School Player of the Year. A little bit better than 70% of the free throw line this year. He's been under the weather recently, suffering from a fall and the flu. He looks good out here tonight, though. Tony Massenburg comes in for the first time. Terry Long will sit down for Maryland, and Gatlin comes back in as Baxter will go out. So a uh, pretty normal rotation for Lefty Drizel. Maryland really doing a nice job, Mike. They've got an eight-point lead in. Stays eight, but Wake Forest is, has not really been able to play their style. Maryland has forced it into an up a little bit faster tempo, I think, than Wake Forest would like. Maryland's biggest game, uh, biggest lead of the year, or of the game, rather, 17 to nine, eight point margin. Great pass to Bogues underneath, who got away and scored. Not only does he do it from outside, Mike, but he posts you up too. <laughs> That's right. That was just speed that did that. Merritt Wake Forest spread out the court away from the basket, and Bogues just blew by. Well, he's not just quick, he's fast, too. 17-11, it's five points for Bogues. 
Jones in the middle of that zone. Gatlin has really moved the ball very quickly to now. Bias, in and out. After the best scoring performance of his life, Saturday night against Duke, Bias off to a slow start here. I'm sure, Mike, that Lenny Bias would rather have his team win than score 41 points. You're right about that. I'm sure he's very satisfied to be up by six points, even though he's probably not satisfied with his personal offensive effort to this point. This is Diver. That's Massenberg out on Bogue. Now he'll go back out and reload top of the key. Well, like we say, Wake Forest is very comfortable. There's 20 seconds left on the shot clock, and that's plenty of time. Wake doesn't mind using the time. Bogue trying to make that quick move, and Gatlin fell back in the lane, making sure he didn't get in there. Shot clock is at 10. And they want to get the ball to Bogues. He's the only one that seems to be able to create anything. He'll take a long jumper. Lines follow won't go. Bogues for the rebound. <laughs> Maryland didn't block anybody out that time. Klein got the first ball. A bad break for Wake that he missed it. But how did Bogues get in there? He had eight rebounds earlier this year against Davidson. He's led the team in rebounding in one game, tied for the lead three others. He can't ask for much more than that out of this guy. Remember when he first signed Dan? Everybody said, you got to be kidding. Five-three guy, he can't play in this league. He can't play in any league. Well, he can play for anybody. He's quite a player. Gatlin will give him the 15-footer, force him to take it if he can. Watch a good defense by Johnson. Klein has a shot rejected by Massenburg. Excellent defense by Maryland as a team that time. Wake stays in the 2-3 zone, and as we said, it's an aggressive zone. Gatlin, Tobias in the lane. What a pure jump shot. With the size or lack thereof that Wake Forest has inside, Mike, I do not believe they can let Lenny Bias catch the ball there. He'll kill him. He's got four so far. 19-11 Maryland, a very rapidly moving game. 7.47 to go first half. Watson and Klein, the two guys they look to for scoring, are 0-7 from the floor so far. Watson backing in on Johnson. Very good offensive player, very quick. Mike Wake actually came out and played a little bit more quickly to start the game than we expected. This, now that they're down eight points, they seem to have reverted to the slow style to try to catch up. Bogues trying to go to the baseline. Gatlin cut him off. Johnson's done a good job on Watson. And Gatlin reaches in. Shot clock at one. And Watson, the worst shot he has had tonight, an off-balance fadeaway jumper, and he drilled it. Good defense by Maryland. That's a tough break. Good shot by Watson, but Maryland played very hard defensively. alley -oop and Bias put it in. What a catch of a great pass. An even better catch. Bias put it in and drew the foul. This is really something, Mike. He's going to dunk this behind his head on this catch. Look at this. With somebody hanging on him and dunks it in there. Foul will go on the line. His first. That's six for Bias. He'll go to the free throw line. Bias has hit 17 straight free throws and is the number two free throw shooter in the conference at 85 percent and what a physical specimen he is. Well, I'm just sitting here thinking, Mike, if uh, he was permitted to do it, he'd be perfect for one of those health spa ads. They never have guys <laughs> like me that need it. They have guys like Lenny. Boy, he'd be good. <laughs> Seven minutes and four seconds left in the first half. Maryland has taken its biggest lead. They're on top of Wake Forest. 22-13. We're not a company. But outstanding. And here comes Bogues. Bob Stack has Bogues on the court right now with Mark Klein, Larkins, Watson, and Alan Dickens. Wake Forest has to do a better job converting their possession. Watson misses again. Larkins tried to keep it alive. Gatlin comes down. Speedy Jones had him blocked out, Mike, and Speedy Jones was just a little too big. Larkins is a very good jumper, but Maryland's size paid off on that occasion. Speedy Jones is one of those guys who never does. Johnson penetrates again. Oh, shot. Time after time, Mike, he's made that penetration move, and he's created open shots for himself as well as for his teammates, and Maryland is in complete control. Johnson, who averages six and a half points a game, already has seven. Wake Forest has scored 13 points in 13 minutes, approaching 14 minutes of basketball. Mike, they've point a minute hardly uh, gives you much of a chance, doesn't No, it sure doesn't. They've, they've hardly had any good shots. One of their buckets was that Watson took was a terrible shot that went in. How about some credit for uh, the defense that Lefty Grizzell has designed for this? Absolutely, Mike. They're playing very hard in the man-to-man -man defense. They're helping one another out very well. 
That's Klein, an off-balance jumper. It won't go, but he'll get the foul at least. Klein coming off the screen. As Cal Boyd comes in the game for Wake Forest. Johnson went to help and committed the foul. Number two on Johnson. Wake Forest has the, has the floor very spread out. You see a good screen there. Johnson as he's coming over to help on the screen was a little bit late and got Klein on the arm. Klein has hit only eight of his last 28 field goals coming into this ball game. Always been a great free throw shooter. He is 0 for 3 tonight, so that makes him eight out of his last 31. It's about 26, 27 percent. Mark Klein is a much better shooter. Well, he is nice, but probably in the last few games, he's gotten much more defensive attention than he's ever gotten before. Hits both free throws, 24-15. They cut it back to nine. And coming in for the first time, senior D. Calvert out of Memphis, Tennessee. And he'll replace Klein, give him a breather. Back in really not much offense along the front line for Wake Forest right now. Hardly at all, except for Larkins. Because they've got Dickens, who averages one point a game, and Dee Calvert, who averages 2.8. Got to beat the 10-second clock. Gatlin beat it by one, gets it to Bias. He just soars with that jump. Missed it, but Maryland will keep it alive. Credit Massenburg with that as Lewis gets the loose ball. Nobody blocked him out, Mike, and we said one of the things that Wake Forest had to do was control their defensive board. Maryland has had more than a couple second opportunities tonight. Gatlin inside to Lewis, and Lewis travels. He just lost track of where he was on the court, Mike. Turned around and started to jump up and realized that he was underneath the backboard. Couldn't bring himself down fast. 24-15, we're approaching the five-minute mark of the first half. This is Cowboy's good shooter. Got away from Bias, and they switch. Massenburg gets on him, missed the shot. Rebound goes to Lewis. Maryland has dominated the defensive board. That's five rebounds for Derek Lewis, the sophomore forward. Johnson wants to bring it out. Boy, what a fast-moving first half. Not many fouls, not many stoppages of play. 24-15 is our score. Johnson penetrating again. He's been perfect when he does it, and he still is. Young man is having himself quite a game, Mike. He's got nine points already, and Maryland with his biggest lead of 11 points matched again. Oh, the Turks really dominated this ball game. It's interesting, Mike. Maryland is not playing really that much overplay defense, but despite that fact, they're forcing Wake Forest to start the offense about 30 feet from the basket. And as the clock runs down, Wake doesn't seem to get any closer. Wake is shooting only 31%. Both trying to penetrate. Got it blocked by Massenburg. That's one thing that they've been able to do is when he penetrates, somebody's waiting. Oh. Gatlin. Oh, what a pass. And Bias sort of smiles like, well, maybe I should have had that one. I didn't look up quick enough. Three, it was a great six, pass. Three, six, three, oh. Of course, the thing that makes the pass so great, Mike, is when somebody catches it. It looked real good, but it turned out to be a bad pass because it surprised Bias so much he couldn't catch it. That's right. 3.59. First half. It's Maryland 26. Wake Forest. We'll be back right after this. I'm bouncing. From the field, hit a free throw. The rest of the team is shooting a none too crisp two for 11. Mike, even though Muggsy Bogues has become more important in the offense as a scorer, as you see Lefty Drizel sending his team back on the court, the place where Bogues is most effective is passing off to his teammates. Maryland has done a nice job helping out and limiting that ability by Bogues, and his teammates, when he has gotten them the ball, as you say, they have not been able to convert. Mark Klein tells Bogues uh, he'd like to run a certain play, so Bogues backs it out and they'll start it again. Both teams with 17 field goal attempts in the first half. You see the disparity on the ones that are made. Wake Forest now trying to run some things to get Mark Klein open along the baseline, but again, Maryland with excellent defense. Klein tried to toss it into Calvert, who lost the ball, then fell down. Alley oop to Bias. Turnaround baseline. Jumper 28 15. The lead is soared to 13 points. Bias got away with dribbling on the floor right next to Muggsy Bogues. Bias even has a quick dribble. Now here is Lewis on Bogues. I think this is a mistake. Lewis is 6'7". And look how far he'll lay back. You better believe he's going to stand there in the red, Mike. He's not going to come out and try to guard Bogues. They will come out only to deny him, and Bogues got the ball anyhow. Penetrates! Shot wouldn't go for the young man. 
Loose ball. Here comes Johnson for Merrill. That's actually good defense by Lewis. Bogues penetrated by, but he went right into the help, and then with Lewis's size, Bogues couldn't get a good shot. Scatlin kicks it back to Johnson. He wants to penetrate. Got the bucket. And offensive foul called on Johnson, but he scored again. And Johnson has 11 points on 5 for 5 from the floor. Somebody must have been talking to this young man right there. Cowboy gets in and draws the charge. But somebody must have been saying something to Johnson about somebody picking up the slack for Lenny Bias because Johnson has been aggressive tonight. And now he goes and takes a well-deserved breath. Plus, he's sitting down because he has three personal fouls now. Baxter comes back into the ballgame. We have 2.35 to go in the half. Maryland has doubled Wake Forest offensive output in the first 17 and a half minutes. Wake Forest does not look as sharp tonight, Mike, as they have in their last three games. I think one of the reasons, Dan, may be that nobody has played this defense against them. I mean, I'm not totally sure about that, but it appears that way. Klein working for a shot. Gatlin right on top of him. Then he fired up an air ball. Wake Forest has been successful because Bogues has been able to get his teammates open shot, but that's not true tonight. Bias got the ball to Long, wanted it back, and Long delivered, and Lenny lost it out of bounds. Last touch by a Wake Forest player, so it's out to Maryland. Right now, they just seem to be in total control. It looks like they're gliding, Mike. It doesn't even look very hard. And in the last couple of weeks, things have looked very hard. Maryland has scored 11 of the last 13 points to go up by 15. Lewis, low to bias, got it in there, put it on the floor. And it's out once again to Maryland. He's lucky to hang on to it, Mike. Can't be dribbling the ball in there. Shot clock is at 14 seconds. It does not recycle on something like that. Massenberg in the lane. His first try, he has two. And Lefty Drizel, who has never lost six games in a row in his life as a coach, doesn't want this one to be the one. He doesn't know how to act over there, Mike. He forgets what it's like to have a 17 point lead. No, he doesn't know what it's like to uh, lose five games in a row, either. Yeah, that's for sure. Lefty's getting a lot of new things thrown at him this year. <laughs> I'm sure he likes the 17 point lead better than the five in a row loss. Uh, you don't win 515 games in your career if you have too many of those five game losing streaks, I'll tell you. Bogues from outside this time won't go. Another Maryland rebound off those boards this time. It's Bias. I think Wake Forest has two follows in this ballgame. Bogues now three of eight from the floor. This is Gatlin, a 19-footer. Maryland just doing it all the way you're supposed to right now. 34-15. The Deacons have to wonder what all this talk was about Maryland playing for. Maryland has scored 10 straight. I think it must not be a mistake. That's Lewis again. I thought he was matched up against Bogues on a switch, but he's not. That's an indication of the way they're trying to play, because Lewis isn't going to follow him around. He's going to stay inside. Pass saved inside by White. That was Marco Pickett who's into the ball game, a red shirt football player who played his first game earlier this year for White Sports one day after he started practice with the team. So Bob Stack has had to go when you see anybody, I guess in Bogues' case, over 5'3 on campus, you ask them to come out. And no basket. We've got a foul. Be on bias, I believe. It's eight seconds to go. And now we've got, uh, I'm sorry, we had uh, Dwayne Owens, number 23. We had Marco Pickett listed as 23, but it is Dwayne Owens in the ball game. They switched numbers since the last ball game, or I switched them, one or the other. Free throw by Bogues is good. Bogues has eight points of Wake's 16, and that's what he's been doing the last few ball games, producing or assisting on at least half of the points. It's another one. Joe Blair, uh, publicity director here at Maryland, just gave us the official attendance. This is a trip, sort of a tribute to Maryland fans. 11,950 showed up for this one. Gatlin with a long shot trying to beat the buzzer, doesn't do it. And that is the end of the first half as Maryland leaves the court with a comfortable lead. Our score at halftime from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park is Maryland 34, Wake Forest 17.
This portion of tonight's game has been brought to you by the U.S. Army. Balanced Army. attack, Johnson with 11 points on 5 for 5 shooting. Bias, he's going to get his. Maryland guards Mike Gatlin, Baxter, and Johnson are 10 for 13 in the first half. And Wake Forest with a terrible first half shooting percentage missed 10 of its last 11 shots in a half. See what Bob Stack can come up with at halftime. This is Watson. Little spinning move. Nice pass. Dropped it off and long. Got a big arm up there and caused a problem underneath. That's exactly characteristic of the way it went in the first half, Mike. Wake Forest was not able to get very many clean shots at the basket. Good defense by the And Long got a hand up that time and stuffed Larkins. Wake Forest is awfully small, Mike. They drive in there, and even though Maryland doesn't have a lot of tall players, Lewis and Bias are excellent jumpers. Bias gets it back outside. Whistle away from the ball, and it's going to be a foul on Larkins for trying to hold in there. That'll be his second. And that's something we didn't see very many of in the first half either, Mike, is personal fouls. The game was played in such a manner that there just weren't very many to be called. Gatlin will inbound. They should join this late at 34-17 Maryland. It has uh, been the Terrapins game all the way. Long threw it away, but Gatlin got it back. Or rather, Derek Lewis threw it away, and Gatlin got it back. Now it's out of bounds. Off of Muggsy Bogues, who went to the floor trying to save it. Well, he went to the floor with some assistance from Terry Long. Tripped over Long and fell down. I sort of like that dribbling statistic. If you don't have anything else to do and you're at home, maybe you can uh, keep that. Oh, who in the world is going to count dribble? I don't know, but you probably drive your wife crazy, wouldn't you? <laughs> 518, 519, 520, 521. So you think it was time to, to fasten that jacket that snaps in the back. Here's another whistle. Got a foul inside on Paul Diver. Once again, Maryland attacking on the inside of that zone. Two on Diver. Long posted up inside. Diver was behind him. Diver tried to knock the ball away. Maryland just doing everything right. Baxter from outside. And Maryland shooting with a great deal of confidence right now. And Baxter is in with eight points, the senior from Washington. And this is the biggest Maryland lead at 36 17. Wake Forest has been completely stymied so far by Maryland's defense. Watson finally gets one down from inside. Wake Forest is here. Now they're trying to press. Now they didn't get it organized very well because a couple guys forgot what they were supposed to do. The Wake Forest now is forced to press to pick up the tempo of the game to try to get back in it. And to pick up the tempo is really the last thing that they wanted to do coming into the bias banks at home. That's 11 for Lenny Bias. He had a quiet nine in the first half with the exception of that behind his head dunk off the alley-oop. He is now the fourth leading all-time scorer. He has surpassed uh, Tom McMillan in Maryland history. Watson to Divert in the lane, turn around, jumper partially blocked by Long. This is Larkin. Great vertical jump, kept it alive after missing it, followed by Divert. That's something you didn't see much of in the first half, Mike. Wake Forest really banging on the offensive board. First two points for the freshman from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, who's been forced to do it the hard way. Thrust into a role that he has to play in the middle. 38-21. This is Baxter who's got the hot hand. Jeff Baxter knocks it home. He has 10, and it's 40 to 21 turns. Everything Maryland does tonight, Mike, seems to be working. Wake was back in the diamond and one or box and one against Bias, and Maryland didn't even take note of it. Baxter just drilled it. Baxter has hit five of six. Bogues, they lay off of it. This is Klein, who had two points in the first half. The team's leading scorer long blocked the shot, and they'll call him for the foul. I thought it was a pretty good block, but two officials threw the hand up together. Mike, officials don't like certain things, and one of the things officials don't like is blocked shots. <laughs> And Terry Long, he's blocked a couple in there, and so they finally got him. They decided three or four is enough, they're going to get him. Well, he looked like he did block the shot, but then uh, on the replay, which is uh, the advantage we have, he came through and did hit Klein on the hand. And Klein is not the guy you want to send to the free throw line. He doesn't shoot that many, but he is an 82.5% free throw shooter. Klein has had to work so much harder this year at things that you never expected him to do before. Uh, he has worked hard on his inside game, mostly been a perimeter player in his entire career. He's just been forced to do it. 
That's the first free throw Wake has missed tonight. Up to that point, they were 8 for 8 from the line. 40-22. This is Lewis. 16-56 left in the ballgame. Maryland, after its first ACC win of the year, after the worst start in Lefty Grizzell's coaching career here in 17 years. And see Larkins following Lenny Bias around. Brett McCann on him, but he's too small. Bias operating inside. Wake Forest is just too small inside to really have a lot of success with that. Well, it's 6-4 against 6-8. As much as Larkins can jump, Bias can jump, too. There's a nice shot by Klein off the glass. Gatlin almost lost it. When you see Bogues coming, you give up the ball. That's the safest way to play it. Klein's trying to get back in and help, but is, when Bias is in there like he is right now with Larkins behind him, now there's two guys on Bias. And Long will try his luck. 44-24, the lead skies to 20. And this defense has done a great job of keeping Muggsy Bogues out of the lane where he's so dangerous watching the point. Wake Forest only had one assist in the first half and this is the player who leads the country in assists. That's the key to that defense, Mike. They've decided that they're going to worry about Bogues' assists that they're not going to be that concerned about his score. Terry Long hits two straight 46-26. That's four points for Long who averages 3.1 points a game and if they can get play like that out of the 6'8 junior from Glen Allen, Virginia Maryland is still going to be a threat to people down the stretch. They've got a lot of talent on the basketball team, Mike. This, is a, this game ought to be a great confidence builder for them. And they can sure use a shot out of it. Bo's calling out. Fine. This is Watson. Neither one has had a good shooting night. But Watson with a great drive. Bias. Bias blocked it. This is Diver. He's blocked by Derek Lewis. And Bias. Uh, take a pick right there. They both came after him. Well, you see Wake Forest's real lack of height and jumping ability inside has killed him. And Baxter. Now, Baxter, this is the kind of a guard, uh, game guards dream of. He's just made everything in sight. Six out of seven has a dozen. Mike, and Muggsy Bogues, the expression on his face as he caught that inbound pass and turned to bring it up the court was one of real pain. He just doesn't know what's going on. Klein, nice play to score inside, 48-28. Now again, Wake Forest is trying to get a press coming up the court, but Larkins and Dybert both went down the court and Lewis brings the ball up, so there's no pressure there. Gatlin trying to penetrate, kicks it off to Bias. He's great from 17, did it in the long. Land Bias, who is the leading scorer in the league, has a chance to become the number one all-time scorer from Maryland if he scores a lot of points in the remaining games, is not a gunner. He is not a greedy player. That's a great pass inside for Long, finding an open guy. Line, they've decided he's got to shoot. Larkins with a rebound gives it back to Bogues. A lot of guys might have taken that shot in the position Bogues had, but he's just so small, Gatlin was there, he could have blocked it. Bias is guarding Larkin. That's a tough, tough job for Arthur. Larkin to try to get the ball. Lewis knocked the ball away, and there's Bogues. Almost saved it, lost it out of bounds. Boy, you turn your head for a second, and he's by five people and has his hands on the basketball. He certainly hasn't quit, Mike. 13 minutes, 29 seconds to go in the ballgame from College Park. It's Maryland 50, Wake 28. We'll be back right after this. They've exploited the weakness of Wake Forest on the inside to perfection. Johnson is in for Gatlin at guard. He's in there with Baxter. Good pass inside to Tom Jones, who's checked in, and Jones scores. Maryland spreading it around very well. First two points of the night for Tom Jones. The lead is 24. Bogues tried to go end to end. Loose ball. And it's out to Maryland. Wake Forest still hustling, left Dickens on the floor after the ball. Tyrone Bogues blew down the court, was almost past everybody, but again, you saw the difficulty he's been having all night. He got in there, big hands, jumping up, blocking the ball. And in case you haven't seen, uh, haven't watched Wake Forest in a few games and don't know who Dickens is, you shouldn't. He just joined the team three games ago, a 6'8 junior pre-med student. Johnson going for the, or rather Larkin's going for the steal, almost had it. No, they're still hustling, and that's 
That's the one trademark with all the problems they have had. They have played hard for Bob Stack, and he's got to be very proud of his kid. He switched defenses again. They've only shown zone in that box and one, but now they're in a straight man-to-man -man defense. They've got to pick up the tempo. This is Massenberg in the ball game. Put it on the floor, lost it, makes the bucket, and he'll get the foul. Maryland still hasn't missed one this half, Mike. This is amazing. Good pass inside. Excellent cut by Massenberg to get in position. He made a mistake dribbling the basketball, but he had enough strength to get the ball up to the basket. Call the foul on Dickens, his third. 12.31 to go. And Massenberg will go to the free throw line. Missed the free throw. Cal Boyd with a rebound. Quickly to Bogues. There's Bogues right in the middle of a big crowd as Maryland does an excellent job getting back on defense and stopping his penetration. This is D. Calvert to Klein to Boyd. Boyd's a good outside shooter. Hasn't touched the ball too much. Baxter laying off Bogues, and he'll take a long jump shot, and he cans that one. Mike, you have to give up something, and that's what Maryland's been willing to concede. 54-30. Bias will bring it up court. Now Bias wants to shake and bake, maybe, and then gives it up. Maryland has hit all 10 of its field goals in this half and leads by 24. Oh, if you're going to make them all, you don't lose. That's what Villanova had to do last year to beat Georgetown in the finals. Virtually made them all. Massenburg. Almost got that Jamal Wilkes kind of release when he holds the ball back behind his shoulder. Klein trying to penetrate off the void. This is Bogues. Once again, you see the Maryland defense dropping back in.